Pinwheels are baked fresh throughout the day and come in two delicious flavors, roasted red pepper and Swiss and caramelized onion and Parmesan. They're buttery, flaky, and delicious. It tastes amazing. Definitely something that I'd look forward to having again. Try Tim's new savory pinwheels today. It's time for Tim's. Simply Spike Lemonade. Real fruit that left the farm and has seen too much to ever go back. Now introducing Simply Spike Peach. It's getting juicy. A common theme is just like, how are we going to win? Not talking about anything else other than winning. I don't think we've earned the right as a team to just be taken at our word. This is year nine for this front office. It's clear that it has not been good enough. Expectations are changing. The shortstop's announcing. Ronaldo Blanco has no hit the Blue Jays. Hardly any hard contact tonight by the Blue Jays. The stars have to play like stars, and right now that's not really happening. There might be some jobs on the line. A lot of talk about whether or not Mr. Schneider is in the hot seat, and Don Mattingly is one of his bench coaches. Four and six, not exactly what we had hoped for on this season opening road trip. It's the Blue Jays home opener tonight. Jose Barrios will start for Toronto. Both these teams struggling offensively to begin the year. Seattle averaging just three runs per game. The Jays batting 193 as a team. That's the second worst in the majors. With more, let's go down to the dome and welcome in Jennifer Hedger. Hello, yes, and alongside Scott Mitchell and Scott, the boys are back in town after a 10-game road trip to start the season. The boys' bats look eerily reminiscent to the boys' bats of last year. And I know 10 games is a very small sample size, but when you couple that with the fact that hitting was a real issue last year and this issue is now bled into the new season, how concerning is that? Yeah, this is all we talked about last September when you were down at the ballpark. October, we saw it really boot them out of the playoffs. And look, normally I'd sit here and say, whoa, 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 we're only 10 games in. That's 116th of this baseball season. But you hit it on the head. The, the issues look eerily similar to what they were going through last year. And you look at the numbers right now, and objectively, this just hasn't been a good offense. You look at it, 193 team batting average, that's 29th in baseball. 197 with runners in scoring position, that is 28th in baseball. That's led to 3.6 runs per game, that's 23rd in all of baseball. So the Blue Jays are going out, 22 teams are outscoring them on a nightly basis. That's not going to get it done. It's not going to get it done after talking all winter about internal improvement and Ross Atkins addressed the media before the home opener tonight and said he's encouraged by some of the signs and that's hard to believe if you're a fan kind of watching this team but under the hood look Vladimir Guerrero Jr. is not going to hit under 200 Bo Bichette's not going to hit under 200 and George Springer is not going to hit under 200 so this is going to get better but it looks just like last year, so not a lot of patience involved right now. Pitching and great pitching can cover up a multitude of sins, and we saw that last season. Uh, the Blue Jays pitching had the second-best ERA in the American League. This year, the pitching hasn't been quite as lights out, especially you look at the long ball. 19 home runs so far given up by the pitching staff. That leads the major leagues. Um, how do you rate the Jays pitching so far? Yeah, that's the interesting part coming into the season. We talked about the offensive struggles last year rotation really carried this team when things weren't going well offensively they also were able to stay healthy all season long as well we've already saw we've already seen both of these issues kind of crop up Kevin Gosman clearly not hundred percent and when you look at their rotation ERA right now 640 they are last in the American League they played 10 games and in five of them they've given up eight or more earned runs eight or more runs as a team so you're not going to win a whole lot of ball games no matter how you're hitting so really this is just a team that's coming in here back home for a long homestand off a long road trip not playing very good baseball well a chance to find some consistency now back at home uh, the Blue Jays have won four games so far this season for two of them Jose Barrios was on the mound and he gets the start tonight well, the golf world has turned its attention to Augusta National as it's officially Masters Week and when I say golf world that definitely has a different meaning than it did just a couple of years ago because all of the top players from the Live Tour will be mixed in with the PGA's best, making it an ultra-competitive field for the year's first major. To kick off our golf report presented by Mercedes-Benz, here's James Duffy in our panel. Thank you, our favorite sentence every year. Welcome to Augusta National and TSN's week-long coverage of the Masters. Tiger Woods in the first group out Monday morning to practice 
and Adam Hadwin, one of four Canadians in the field for the 88th Masters. James Duffy alongside Graham Dillette and Bob Weeks here on Eclipse Day. The Masters actually handed out uh, these glasses to every single one of the patrons and all of us. Uh, we don't need them anymore. It's over and you can't see anything because it's black when you're not looking into the sun. Bob, it's it's over, Bob. What? Those those are studio lights. Oh. Those studio <laughs> lights up there, Bob. Let's do an early assessment of the legit contenders. We know Scotty Scheffler tops the list, the number one player in the world. If Scotty's on and that mallet putter is working, can anyone else contend with him here? Well, I think he can be beaten, but the list is short. I would say three guys in the entire world. I mean, Rory McIlroy, when he's on his game, is elite. There's no question about it. He drives it so well. If he can get that putter going, much like Scotty. Uh, John Rahm, who we haven't seen a whole lot of, obviously playing on the live now, but, I mean, he was a top two or three player in the world for a long time. There's a reason. It's because he's good. And then the last is Brooks Kepka. It seems like every Sunday afternoon in a major championship, we're talking about Brooks. You can maybe give uh, you know a little nod to Wyndham Clark. He's playing some nice golf, but those three guys stand out in my opinion. I think the best story of them would be would be Rory McIlroy trying to close off that career Grand Slam. I mean, he's been at it for so long now; he just hasn't been able to do it. But he's had a pretty sort of mediocre year. And after the Players Championship, he went out and had a lesson with Butch Harmon. He seems to help have helped him. He had a tie for third last week. Then he got some new irons from TaylorMade, which he said is the first new irons he's had in two years. He loves those, so those things are going well. But for him, it's very important to get off to a fast start. That is not something he has done well at Augusta National. In fact, he's only broken 70 twice in 15 starts. And you look at how many shots back he is on this board here, and you can see the, the closest he's been after the first round is six strokes behind the leader. And you just cannot play catch-up on this golf course. The greatest Masters mystery, and you mentioned it, are the live players. For what it's worth, Rahm's playing well, Joaquin Neiman's played really well, Patrick Reed's played well, Brooks Kepka, Phil Mickelson not playing well, but does that even mean anything on live? How do we assess these guys? It's tough to draw a comparison between the two because of the way they're playing. And and some of the courses that the live guys are playing are great. Doral last week was a good golf course, but you look, there was a 6,700-yard golf course on the menu as well. So it's hard to put apples to apples. And you look at Brooks Kepka, his last two rounds last week were five over and five over. Does that make him not a, a, a favorite? I don't know. I don't think so. But it's just so hard to judge. Yeah, and you talked Joaquin Neiman. I mean, this is a kid when he came out, every single player knew how much talent he has. And the sky was the limit for this kid. But it's almost like he's uh, forgotten before he even started his career because he went to live so early. And uh, But this is a guy who has all the tools, and you wouldn't be surprised if he's in the mix. We spent almost two decades here where Tiger was the number one story coming in every year, whether he was playing well or not. Maybe he was coming back from an injury or a scandal. Have we now transitioned from the question, can Tiger contend, to can Tiger make the cut and make it through 72 holes here that's that's a really big mountain for him to climb it would be a good one i'm sure he's up for the task we've only seen one round with him at the genesis we saw half another one but he was throwing up for the most part of it and we saw him out on the golf course today it looked like the old tiger he hit a drive on 13 at about 220 in with an iron stuck it to about 10 feet we do know though that he's still got some pain in that foot that he had fused some pain in that lower back that he had fused so there's still some some hurdles for him to get over and you mentioned that shot on 13, Bob. The crowd went absolutely nuts. It's rare that you get a Monday roar at Augusta <laughs> National. Also, we mentioned the quartet of Canadians, Adam Hadwin, playing pretty good golf. Nick Taylor, of course, with that big win in Phoenix already this year. Corey Connors usually plays great here at Augusta National, although he missed the cut last year. And Mike Weir, back 21 years after winning that green jacket. Our Masters coverage presented by Mercedes-Benz. Expanded coverage begins on Thursday, 10 a.m. Eastern with featured groups and Amen Corner. Akshay Batia claimed a spot in the field yesterday by winning the Valero Texas Open. He's a lefty, and a lefty has won this tournament six times since 2003. The Golf Report is presented by Mercedes-Benz Electric. Lead with innovation, lead the charge. All right, as SportsCenter rolls on, Zach Eady has been nearly unstoppable in this tournament, but our panel reveals he's starting to show some cracks in his game, and the Canucks will likely have to deal with the Kings or Golden Knights in the first round. So does Craig Button still think they can do damage in the playoffs? Find out next. We're bringing the Mercedes-Benz experience to every electric and plug-in hybrid driver. The power to restore you to full charge with ease. 
a seamless experience that feels more like a destination than a detour. Automotive's great innovator is building Canada's high power charging network. Mercedes-Benz, lead the charge. Subway Cyber Sub Days are here, so we baked up a fresh deal. Buy one foot-long sub online or in the app, get one free. Yeah, that's right, free. But don't wait, this offer ends April 21st, only on Subway.com or the Subway app. Julie's having eggs for dinner. They're quick, they're delicious, there's nothing stopping her. Not even her husband's model train club. Eggs for dinner. What's stopping you? Red Dot Savings are on now. Save up to $200 on the tech brands you love. You think you've seen the sun, but you ain't seen it shine. Wait till you see that sunshine day. You ain't seen nothing yet. The best is yet to come. Won't it be fine? The best is yet to come. Come the day you're mine. I just asked. I asked. We just asked. Is Ozempic right for you? Just ask your doctor. At Burger King, stretch your dollar into an $8 meal so you can stretch lunch into lunch. Get an extra long cheeseburger or original chicken sandwich plus fries and a drink, all for just 8 bucks. Thank you, Canada, for your Kruger Big Assist nominations. From April 9th to 11th, Canadians can join in on the assist by voting for one of five regional minor hockey associations to win the $75,000 grand prize. Learn more at KrugerBigAssist.ca. Back to the Women's World Hockey Championship. Group B, an important game between Germany and Sweden because the winner of this one clinches top spot in Group B and avoids a quarterfinal matchup with Canada or the U.S. Pick it up in the third, still scoreless. Tabea Bata floats it from the point. It deflects off of Francisca Feldmeyer in front, and it's in. Germany stuns Sweden with the first goal of the game. Fewer than 90 seconds to go now. Still 1-0 Sweden on the power play. Lini Youngbloom wide open in the slot, but Sandra Abstrider is there to make the biggest of her 32 saves in the game. Abstrider, the lone PWHL player on Germany uh, from PWHL Ottawa, gets her first career shutout at this tournament as Germany gets the win. Speaking of the women's worlds, we're setting up for U.S. versus Canada next on TSN 1 and 5. Overdrives over on TSN 2, and if you want more Sports Center. Keep it locked to TSN 3 or TSN 5. Close captioning of this program is brought to you in part by Bell. Switch to Canada's fastest internet. Hey, Canada. Kick your week off right at Montana's. Our wings are double dusted in-house, sauced up, and half price every Monday. Why not pair them with a 14-ounce draft? Just $4.99 every day. Only at Montana's. I do anything. At PetSmart, you can save up to 20% on your dog's first groom with the Salon Welcome Package. So they can be by your side for all the moments that matter. Anything PetSmart, for anything for pets. <laughs> Whether you're doing it yourself or hiring a pro, today, let's paint. Exclusively at the Home Depot. Every cup of Tim's coffee tells a story. We select high-quality, responsibly sourced beans and blend them using the same recipe and level of care since 1964. It's Canada's favorite coffee for a reason. Tim's for good. Learn more at timhortons.ca. Ladies and gentlemen, out there, it's a beast. It's hunger for adventure insatiable. Behold, the Subaru Cross Trek Wilderness. I just asked. Yeah, I asked. We just asked. Is Ozempic right for you? Just ask your doctor. 
Thank you, Canada, for your Kruger Big Assist nominations. From April 9th to 11th, Canadians can join in on the assist by voting for one of five regional minor hockey associations to win the $75,000 grand prize. Learn more at KrugerBigAssist.ca. At Domino's, mix and match any two or more pizzas and sides for just $8.99 each. Like when pizza night's more like pizza and lava cakes night. Or pasta and stuffed cheesy bread night. Or we're gonna need a bigger table night. Mix and match Canada's favorite pizza and more at Domino's. Next time on The Amazing Race. You ready to go, baby. Take back our number one spot. In Santiago, Chile. Teams scale new heights. Oh. Amazing Race, Wednesday at 9.30, 7 Mountain on CTV. March Madness National Championship on TSN. The Canadians looking to remain perfect here in Utica at the Women's World's top spot in Group A on the line. They get a win tonight. They will sit atop Group A. However, Team USA, they've got other plans. They want to remain perfect as well. And they want to own top spot in Group A. It's one of the best rivalry of sports, people, and it's happening tonight. When I get there, wish you meet me. Will I find a smile that greets me? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Continues between these two teams. Fans just as excited for it as we are. It's the United States, it's Canada, and they're set to clash in Group A action at the Women's Worlds here in Utica. Canada, USA, they know what's on the line. It's top spot in Group A as we welcome you inside Adirondack Bank Center. Hello, everyone. I am Tessa Benham alongside Megan Bozek and Sammy Joe Small. Games we've all played in, the ones we get up for, the ones we still get up for, quite frankly. We're all jabbing each other before this game. Makes for a lot of fun, albeit our backs are a little bit too sore to be out there and compete. Nonetheless, we're enjoying it just as much as we can. But to continue to get us set up for this rivalry game, let's get to Julia to Sherry. This year, of course, most of them have PWHL postseason pushes to look forward to. When head coach of Canada, Troy Ryan, spoke earlier this week, he said he thinks this will be the, one of the best world championships of all time because of that seamless, transi seamless transition from season right into tournament. Now, when we're talking about differences between Canada and the United States, they couldn't have had more different philosophies when it came to building out their rosters. The average age of Canada's roster is 28 years old. That is the oldest roster that they've ever iced at this tournament. The USA, on the other hand, has gone almost entirely for the youth movement, with five players making their debut at this tournament and 14 of them being born after the year 2000. So we'll see, Tess, what proves victorious tonight. Wiley Vets, who know how to win, or this adrenaline that comes from you playing on home ice for the first time. All right, these two teams, neck and neck, they're incredibly close when it comes to statistics and games against each other. 17 wins apiece. Look at the goals for and against. 
The only difference is gold medals. Canada with 12 and USA with 10. The latest for the Americans was in Brampton, Ontario on Canadian soil, leaving a very bad taste in the Canadians' mouth. So you best bet they're coming into this one with a major chip on their shoulder. A lot of those players playing for Team Canada this year were on that team. So, Sammy, who on Team Canada needs to lead the charge in order to get things going for them early here? Well, I think a player that is playing some of her best hockey of late is 33-year-old Nat. Natalie Spooner maybe came back a little bit too early last year at the 2023 World Championships after the birth of her son Rory but since then has been on fire with PWHL Toronto she is one of their leaders she leads the entire PWHL in points and has two assists so far in this tournament a strong confident player a bit like the moon she casts her shadow over everybody on the ice eclipse season we saw the eclipse today that's what she's dropping the old metaphors for and natalie spooner has done such a good job of dropping her shoulder and embracing the spooner wraparound i think we've made it kind of a thing to call the spooner wraparound but she's using her size to her advantage it's really hard to defend someone that drops her shoulder leans into that plate and she finds the back of the net more times she's than not creating space for everybody else out there too right that's it she's drawn yeah. defenders to her speaking of some Somebody else who's incredibly hard to defend. It's tough to ignore Brienne Jenner in that sense, Megan. Brienne Jenner has some of the best hockey IQ I've ever seen playing with and playing against. But just how she gets open for her teammates, she's humble out there, she's a leader, but she finds the open space, she finds the dot. This is her 10th world championship so she's gotten up for these big games canada versus us for years now she has three kids a mom to three kids she can do it all it seems well probably has no time in her hands at all but <laughs> she's not what i like about her she's not a flashy player right yeah. Like, you don't necessarily notice her out there, but then she just quietly is gaining point after point after point after point. She, and she's she been does on a little... line with Marie-Philippe Poulin for, for years now. So that they chemistry, have such great chemistry. The yeah. chemistry is there for their mm -hmm. first line. The chemistry is there for their second line. And their third and fourth lines are rolling. You mentioned Jenner playing in her 10th World Championship. There's a couple Gosling cousins that are playing in their first World Championship together, which is pretty cool to think. What an experience to share with a cousin. 23 years old is Julia, 21 years old is Nicole. Both of them having a fantastic time here. Julia especially, who scored her first career goal with the national team against Finland on April 4th. And she's standing by with our Julia to Sherry. Julia, your debut at this tournament, but you got a goal in Kingston, you got a goal in Utica already. You're playing with so much confidence. Can you tell me where it comes from? I think it's just that familiarity with the team. I've been with the team for a little bit now through centralization, and I think now I finally kind of found my groove, and I'm playing with a great line, so it's been awesome. Yeah, I wanted to ask about the chemistry uh, with O'Neill and Sir Daphne. What's working well between the three of you right now? Seven points already this tournament. Yeah, I think we're just flowing. We know where each other are going, and I think we're just all grinders. We all want to score, too, so we just want to have an impact on this team, and it's been going really well, so it's been super fun. Enjoy it. Good luck. Thank you. That line has been make, has been impressing me, making an impact, turning my head, making me look down at my, my roster to see who are these kids, you know? Another player who turns heads and who has been since the beginning of her career, I feel, is Taylor Heisey. How impressive has she been at the tournament so far? Being the first overall draft pick for PWHL Minnesota, it comes with some confidence behind it. It comes with some leadership responsibilities, and I think she's embraced that on the international stage. This is her third world championship with the senior team. She had three U18 worlds. She glides on the ice, and she is one of my favorite players to watch through the neutral zone. It looks like she's not even putting a full stride together, but she always has her heads up looking for that next play. What I watch is how the puck comes off her stick. Yeah. She just rips it. She leans into it. The flex on her stick must be so huge. I like to ISO her when she's on, and she's constantly looking, if you watch her, for the
And Tessa was probably but just in there, right? And Tessa in was there. there. Oh, she was she was itching to get deeper yeah, in there. And I feisty. said, all right, I'm going to help this. Yeah. I'm going to help out this situation. Nonetheless, that little skirmish helped Canada pull through in the end and, and get the win in Burlington, Vermont. Quite the, quite the tournament, I'll say. All right. Speaking of tournaments, this one here, still a lot left to go. Top spot in Group A on the line. We'll continue to get you set up for Canada. USA from Utica, New York. Getting a mortgage shouldn't feel like a wild ride. Take control. Get the answers you need with TD Mortgage Direct. TD. Ready for you. you ready? Change is inevitable. It can send you off in new directions. Show you the unexpected. Like how your favorite spot isn't yours anymore. It's theirs. Introducing the completely reborn three-row Hyundai Santa Fe. Wah changes everything. to see what they can do. Oh, she'll back up as here comes Alex Carpenter. Carpenter backhand drive, she scores! The United States closing things out at home, taking the lead for game one. Turnover chance for the curl, she scores! Heisey with the lane, net front, she scores! Out in front, Gabby Hughes with her second of the game. A 5-2 victory in LA, up 2-0, and the buzzer will go. We need overtime in Kitchener. Taylor Heisey holds on. series lead. This is a place the Canadians have been before. It was just last year's rivalry series that they were down 3-0 and managed to claw their way back into it and win it 4-3. Poulin, backhand, she scores! Canada's captain, the first goal in the shootout. Murphy, forehand, deep, beautiful, she comes up big, and Canada keeps the series alive. Ashton Bell, she shoots, she scores! Great performance through and through by this Canadian team. Team Canada walk away a 4-2 victory. Give some time for Murphy. Back for Harmon. A high shot tipped in front. Scamara. Oh my goodness. An open net. Well, Scamara is kind of looking up at the sky. She knows she had it. Poulain to the far side. Spooner lets it go. She scores. Natalie Spooner has opened the scoring on the power play. Canada will force a Game 7 rivalry series deciding game in Minnesota. Poulain with speed. She shoots. She was amazing this whole series. Last year they made the comeback, so I think we had that confidence also going into these games. So yes, it is factual. The Canadians did pull off the reverse sweep, but the lineup they faced in those final four games is incredibly different compared to the one that is taking the ice here in Utica. 14 NCAA players on this team. Megan, who stands out to you? The decor as a whole for me, Kayla Barnes, Carolyn Harvey, Rory Gilday, Haley Wynn, four of their six defensemen on this roster weren't there in, in February, and that's a big key component that they were missing. Absolutely. Uh, let's take a look at the Team Canada lineup that will be taking the ice tonight.
women donning the Canadian jerseys, and this is how their lineup is shaping up. Just a solid team here, top to bottom. Top line is Sarah Philia, Mary Philippe, Brianne Jenner. The Malte line has been fantastic, always reliable. Clark Turnbull and Stacy, and obviously that young fourth line in Gosling, O'Neill, Serdakny, and Jamie Lee Ratchet, one of the best 13th forwards in the entire game. I don't think we argue about that at all, but for you, Sammy, uh, who stands out to you in that lineup? Well, no changes except for Debian and in Net tonight, but I think the biggest thing is in the fourth game of that rivalry series, it was all of those college kids, and Canada won in a shootout. So I think they're gaining a lot of confidence from that, and I mean, Debian was stellar in that game. She'll have to be stellar again tonight to win it for Canada. Absolutely. This one may not be for any type of medal, but it does matter as it uh, is for top spot in Group A. We'll continue to get you set up for puck drop here in Utica. We are moments away from it. The fans, they got all their warm-up pucks. They traded friendship bracelets and a potato earlier this week. Strange things have happened. Great things are about to come here at the Women's Worlds. Ram Power Days are here. The power to choose from the most awarded truck brand over the last five years. Like Ram Classic, as versatile as it is capable. Ram 1500, voted best large pickup in Canada. Or Ram Heavy Duty, with a no-charge Cummins turbo diesel engine. The power is yours. The time is now. Get 20% off MSRP on Ram Classic for up to 14,200 in discounts. Plus get 4.99% financing. Subway Cyber Sub Days are here, so we've baked up a fresh deal. Buy one foot-long sub online or in the app, get one free. Yeah, that's right, free. But don't wait, this offer ends April 21st, only on Subway.com or the Subway app. Can your paper towel handle tough messes? Try Royale Tiger Towel. The strong fiber structure features two thick layers for great absorbency and tackles the toughest messes. For the strongest Tiger Towel ever, try Royale Tiger Towel. This is our future, Ma. GoDaddy Aero creates a logo, website, even social posts in minutes. Oh, AI. AI like it. Who wants to come see the future? Get your business online in minutes with GoDaddy Aero. Too good to be true Can't take my eyes off of you Michelob Ultra Power through your to-do list and create a space that makes a splash. Find steel tools starting at $179.99. Shop local, buy steel. Find yours at steel.ca. What a weekend for Canadian golf. Golf Talk Canada on TSN. When I get there, wish you need me. Will I find a smile that greets me? I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Women's Worlds finishes off with one of the best rivalries in sports, United States and Canada going head-to-head -head for top spot in Group A. Sarah Nurse and her line 
will have to continue to be the straw that stirs the drink for Team Canada and the NATPA having herself a good time. And of course, Hannah Bilka, NCAA champ with the Ohio State University, all smiles as well. Erin Frankel, she means business as we welcome you inside Adirondack Bank Center. Hello, everyone. I'm Tessa Benum alongside Megan Bozak and Sammy Joe Small. So we've got a good one. The hair on our arms is standing up. We've got goosebumps the whole nine yards. These are the games that we live for to continue to get us set up for this rivalry game between Canada and United States. Let's get to Kenzie and Cheryl who have the call on tonight's game. Well, Tessa, when you go back to the gold medal game, everything changed in the final three minutes and 10 seconds. Hillary Knight got two power play goals to seal that win for the United States. Here she is this year, Cheryl. She's got two power play goals, and that's really been the element right now for the United States, going up against Canada, who has a perfect penalty kill, how John Robleski deploys this power play unit. Well, and you certainly know that there's been a lot of special team action, so it's critical that you take advantage of it. The United States like to work that 2-3 set and activate Alex Carpenter down the middle, so I will certainly be watching for that this this evening because when they're together they look to stretch the zone but they will also shoot the puck you know that Hillary Knight is going to be in that high slot area she'll work her way low into the paint because we all know that that's her wheelhouse she scores from those areas because she's got great timing a great stick you know that Alex Carpenter can work any area of the ice especially when she's below the net she goes everyone's toes to turn towards her and that will open up high ice as well also the cross seam play but I really believe that this is a group look at Hillary Knight's going for a change oh no uh, I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to fire it. But in particular, they, they're unpredictable, Kenzie. So they've got two units that are unpredictable. One that's operated through Heisey, one that's operated at the top. Alex Carpenter will look to activate through the middle and Canada will have to be aware. And that's really the conversation right now when you look at the United States. We're seeing their point production amongst their veterans. Yes. And for Canada, we're kind of seeing it amongst their depth. Tessa. Thank you very much. So we saw on our pregame show just how tight this rivalry is. 17 wins apiece in 34 games between the two of them, Sammy. And often the difference maker comes down to why you're smiling so big right now is goaltending. Well, exactly what I love to talk about. And tonight's start for Canada is Anne-Renée Debien. She has shown incredible consistency over the years and has the ability to win the big games for Canada. Late in a game, there's nobody you'd rather have in that net. She is such a calm presence. You saw her smiling in the opening in the dressing room. Yeah. She's unflappable in her fifth the World Championships. She actually took a break after the 2015 World Championships only to reemerge as Canada's starting goalie in 2021 and she hasn't looked back. And like a solar eclipse, once you see her greatness, you do not forget it. <laughs> and on the U.S. side, I think someone that can score on Davian, that has scored on Davian, is Alex Carpenter. Five points in the tournament, three goals, having a hat trick last game. What I love about Alex's play is her willingness to be a four checker F1, but also to be the first on the back check. She even gets a mini stick in warm ups, which is fun. Nice. But she is one of the smartest players in the game right now. She will find those open spaces, so I think she's going to give Davian and run for her money tonight. Carpenter's getting mini sticks. Malte's getting potatoes. I don't know. Something doesn't add up here. It's not solar eclipse day. It is a solar Weird eclipse day. day. Sammy's made many, many a references. I hope all of you got to catch it in a very safe way. All right, we got a big one coming up tonight. Hillary Knight and company will be taking on Marie Philippe Poulet and her squad here as the Americans get set to take on Canada. The 2024 Women's World Hockey Championship from Utica, New York is brought to you by TELUS. Let's make the future friendly together. By ESSO, celebrate the dedication, growth, and team spirit of minor hockey players with ESSO medals. And by Tim's new savory pinwheels, the perfect snack for those on the go. Order yours on the Tim's app. Ladies, we're here because we deserve to be here. Every rep in the gym, every ship on the ice has fueled that difference and brought us here, no matter what stood in our way. It's time to leave our mark and put it all on the line. Let's show them this is our game, our time. Gatorade. Why aren't there any girls playing? I could taste the changer. Why are there no girls on TV?
TSN puts you in the driver's seat for every NASCAR Cup Series race. And with TSN Plus, keep digging, stay in the gas. Get even more with practice and qualifying. NASCAR lives on TSN and TSN Plus. Did you shave in my hot tub? Just my pets. <laughs> Let's get to work. Come on. What the? The greatest rivalry in sports, Canada versus the United States. The eclipse darkens the sky. Let's see which team shines brightest on the ice here tonight in Utica. As we meet your officials and lines women today, three Canadians and an American, Amanda Tassoni from Bradford, Rhode Island, and Shauna Neary from Halifax, Nova Scotia. And your starting goaltender, the veteran, Anne Renee Dave-Pierre. In her 50th game here with Team Canada, will take on the United States. She has a 17-6 record against the Americans. And at the other end, Aaron Frankel. It's been a quiet prelim for her so far. She's only three, 23 shots from Briarcliff Manor in New York. Well, Troy Ryan will want his team to have great defense and start exactly the way they did against Czechia, swarming their opponent and dictating pace. And on the other side, it's John Robleski. Man, does he ever have some depth to this group, some young depth that is a ton of skill operating three for 11 on the power play. They've been very dynamic, but this is a guy that recognizes that this is a game. This is the matchup. His team has been incredible through the Don Alex Carpenter. She's been operating at 71%, and she's going toe-to-toe -to -toe against Poulin at 85%. Puck drop, and away we go. Canada versus the United States in their final game of preliminary action here in Utica. Who will remain undefeated through preliminary play in Kendall Coyne Schofield? The tension's already rising nine seconds into this game as things get physical. Well, and you can see that the pace is going to be dictated quickly. And you can see Kendall Coyne Schofield trying to get to the puck. And Renata Fast gives that left shoulder as she's heading towards the net. It's always important as an athlete to figure out what the officials are going to call. And so you kind of test the water early. You just want to make sure that it is consistent. Majority of these athletes playing in the PWHL this year. These four officials have officiated in those games as well. So they're used to that physical nature for these athletes. This face off to the right of Dave Pien. Carpenter wins it back cleanly. Keller lets a shot go. An early stop by Dave Pien. Followed up by Kendall Coyne Schofield, who's been having an incredible tournament so far. Kendall Coyne Schofield back here on the international stage. He's already got three goals and three assists. Well, right from the face off draw, 71% that Carpenter is. And you can see it goes right back to Keller. Carpenter gets right to the net, comes back to that high slot. And you got Hillary Knight and Kendall Coyne Schofield right in and around it. Off the face off, Keller. Sending right back down for Kenneth Coyne Schofield. Pops out for Carpenter, who lets the shot go. She picked up her first career hat-trick at the Women's Worlds against Czechia. Keller lets the Shrish shot go. Dave Dan will play it to the corner. Fast battling hard against Hillary Knight. And a Coyne Schofield back in control. Up high, let, looks for Heisey. Too many lineup changes for the United States. We see Janicki drop down, playing alongside Sims and Edwards tonight. And panic will be amongst Curl and Skimora. It's Caroline Harvey. Pressure's on. Kayla Barnes will jump up and play. She just wrapped up her college career at NCAA champion with the Ohio State. Harvey moves it ahead. Aaron Ambrose looks on. Murphy chasing. Rims it around to the far side. Malte will pick it up. Trying to chip it ahead. Malte also a strong opening tournament for her so far. Two goals to show for it. A lot of physicality so far right now. You saw Renata Fast really set the stage early. Alex Carpenter got dumped in the slot area as well. USA chance here in front of a sold out crowd in Adirondack Bank Center. 2 2 battle in behind Aaron Frankel. Caroline Harvey jumps in on it. First ever defender to lead this tournament in scoring back in Brampton last year. USA getting it deep into the zone. Dave Van will hold on to get the whistle as she protects her crease. And Murphy and Ambrose getting physical. But you know that each team wants to set the tone. They really want to dictate the pace. You can see the quick release shot of Alex Carpenter and Jenner coming up behind her and just giving it to her as she drops to the ice. Again, the collision with Heisey and Nurse. That This is a foreshadow of what's to come. We're going to be looking for it. And then Nurse gets it and heads to the bench. We're only a minute and a half in here, Kenzie Lalonde. <laughs> knew this was going to be a high power, intense game. And... I get three minutes into this, and it is just that on the ice. Ashton Bell rims around. 
make it through along the blue line as Gilday stands up. Well, and you really see in the neutral zone how everyone squeezed towards Blair Turnbull and Laura Stacy on that and just held that blue line. These two teams have met 34 times here at the Women's Worlds. It is tied 17-17. Only one winner here tonight as Wynn looks defeated ahead. O'Neal will send it deep in the zone, coming with a strong performance just the other night. O'Neal in front, looking for a pass for Laura Stacey, and Canada will retreat. Abiant comes up to play the puck, feeds it for a fast, looking for O'Neal. She'll skate by Keller, gets taken down in the process, making Keller in control. Lauren Defender in her eighth world championship here with the United States, looks to chip this puck out. O'Neal hopes to keep it in. Well, but it'll Keller. be offside. Kristen O'Neill, of course, no stranger to this rivalry and all tied up at 17. Even the goals for and goals against are so close. Canada's put up 98, approaching the 100. It's a face out. Comes just outside the United States end. That's a Janicki taking the draw for the United States as Canada wins it back. Fast, sending it deep into the zone. Savannah Harmon will skate into it. Harmon, a defender with PWHL Ottawa this year. Giving her faces on the side, one being Grant Jenner. You see Megan Keller and her together, both offensive defenders that will look to jump in. Sometimes they can get caught moving forward, but Megan Keller will look to activate through the middle of the ice. We see it often, and does she ever play a ton of minutes, averaging over 21 right now. Gerson Sims on the far side, feeding Janicki, a backhand shot for Tessa Janicki, and a strong drive by the United States. This young line going to work. Well, you have to try and create speed, and that's exactly what this line does. And if you're able to gain some speed while you're in stride, pick up that puck, you can enter with it. And that's exactly what happens. Nice play by Edwards cross ice. And then look at the, the pause right there. And it's going to be Sims that pauses, delays, brings it to her. And listen, Janicki net drives through the mid lane, but the approach she takes on the defender coming off of that left hip allows her to get that puck and shot on and Renee Debian. The United States, 15 goals for through their three preliminary games so far, the most in Group A. Canada has yet to allow a goal against through seven straight periods. As Aaron Ambrose heads back for the puck, looks up off the glass into center ice. Ella Barnes will skate into it. Two assists for her so far in the tournament. Feeds it for Carolyn Harvey. Chips it ahead, skating in to Alex Carpenter now. The top line, back to work for Team USA. Carpenter lets the shot go into the glove of Dave Bien. Well, Alex Carpenter, you know that she's not afraid to shoot the puck, and why wouldn't she? Especially when you've got someone like Hillary Nett driving. You've got Kendall Coyne Schofield as well. But you talk about Alex Carpenter, she knows where she is on the ice. She also recognizes that if there's a rebound, she's got a few players in Knight and Coyne Schofield that are driving the net. And sometimes the whistle isn't a bad thing, especially when your team has been so good in the dot. Natalie Spooner feeding in for Emma Malte. She'll chip in chase. Malte looking to meet Abby Murphy on the far side. She'll cut up. Back to the point for LaRock, looking to send it in front. Back on the regroup, turnover chance, Walt Hayne. And a full possession, so Abby Murphy on the far side, cuts to center. Wynn spins back, sends it deep into the zone. Strong opening game for Haley Wynn in this tournament from Rochester, New York. Two goals against Switzerland, earning player of the game. At Clarkson University this year, she did have 39 points, 10 of them goals. See a very familiar face on the other side, Nicole Gosling with Team Canada, the two at Clarkson. Cole Gosson, Julia Gosson for the debut here in 2024 with Team Canada. LaRock feeding it ahead for Malte. For a spin pass, Booner will chase. Bass gets there first, sends it deep to the zone, and gets an extra shove there by Megan Keller. So the official is clearly allowing more physicality in this matchup than others throughout this tournament. Turnbull feeds back for the puck, the captain of PWHL Toronto, as she looks to feed it ahead and get by Kayla Barnes. She'll send it right back down. Davia, 18 wins here for her in her women's world career, fourth most in history. As Crow looks to settle this puck, she'll feed it deep into the zone. Davian will come out to play it. And you can see that the Americans, especially with this Panic and Skimura line, are charging below the goal line on the board check with a 2-1-2 split, so being very active. Kelly Panic on the turnover, lets the shot go, hitting Nicole Gosling. USA back along the blue line. Carolyn Harvey takes a wrist shot into the glove of Davian. 
Oh, and a nice heavy four check by Panic and Skimora, as mentioned down below the goal line, and they create a turnover. And on that turnover, recognition of where that ice is, and looking to the, the slot area, Panic recognizes, listen, it's not there. So she takes that shot, and she comes back, reloads in the high ice, and nearly getting a stick on it is going to be Britta Curl. Is that Harvey shot? Harvey loves to put that puck to the net with five assists already in this tournament. Face off to the right of Debian. Sims jumps in on the play, tries to beat Ella Shelton. An elevator bowl here for Ella Shelton at this year's World Championship. Serdaki yeah. to center, trying to feed Kristen O'Neill. The two worked together at last year's tournament in Brampton. And really making a difference here in Utica. Kayla Barnes drops it for Caroline Harvey. Through center, Harvey in control. That's the line, and she'll flip it down. Both defenders will go for a change. Ambrose now turns back, trying to outwork Layla Edwards. Two goals for her in her first world championship with the United States. And one of the things that Americans are looking to do is force the rim, right? With you on the four check, the defender is under siege and you rim it, and then all of a sudden you can activate your defender right down the wall. Janicki looking for Hillary Knight. Rolls in the hands of Jocelyn LaRoff. She'll use a glass to trip right back down. Fourteen oh two into this game, and it's been a an exciting, thrilling start with some of the rough stuff. Well, you both you know both coaches said, listen, let's let's make sure we are imposing our will and our physicality and let's send a clear message on both sides and it's happening. And I like that the officials are allowing more to go. You know, both of these teams, they're the strongest in the world. They're physical, they train, let them play, let them impose that physicality, especially when it, they're fighting for a puck. Marie Flippula taking the face off with Team Canada. Question if she would start the tournament. She's been in the lineup consistently since game one. If she looks to go one on three against the United States, Harmon in control, finding Keller. Megan Keller to Kendall Coin Schofield with speed. Coin Schofield can't get the shot off. USA now in Canada zone. Hillary Knight on the puck. Right now taking a look. Two goals, three assists for her. Both of her goals coming on the power play in this tournament. Win looking for a stretch pass. Canada will retreat to their own zone. Ashton Mel goes DVD, finding Jocelyn the Rock. The defender is working it down low for Canada as they wait for a pass out front. Lauren Gilday looks defeated ahead. Can't have from Minnesota. It looks like Ashton Bell and, and Gossin will likely get inserted with one of the Rock and Bass throughout this game. Nurse looking in front. And Aaron Frankel will make her first stop of the game here against Team Canada. in Utica, New York. More to come. Every cup of Tim's coffee tells a story. We select high-quality, responsibly sourced beans and blend them using the same recipe and level of care since 1964. It's Canada's favorite coffee for a reason. Tim's for good. Learn more at timhortons.ca. Thank you, Canada, for your Kruger Big Assist nominations. From April 9th to 11th, Canadians can join in on the assist by voting for one of five regional minor hockey associations to win the $75,000 grand prize. Learn more at KrugerBigAssist.ca. Every trip, you can depend on ESSO to be the place between places, connecting you to what's next. Well, for Canada and the United States, this is their final game of preliminary play, so next up will be quarterfinals. As we take a look at some of the medals that each team has earned here, 22 title up. Canada, the most gold medals with 12. And, well, Sweden looks really good this year, Cheryl. And, you know, Canada wants to win this. Who's are likely to face them in quarterfinal play, and that came down to the wire in last year's tournament, needing an overtime, and well, Sarah Nurse stood up and got that winner for Team Canada. Well, Hilda Svensson is back with Team Sweden. She was 16 years of age, and she had 11 points in that tournament. She's been excellent so far in this one. Anna Bilka taking a look. Right through center with speed, cuts to the middle of the ice, kicks it wide for Barnes. She lets her a shot go off the body in front. Look, she's in behind Debian. Ice stick will be the call, so we'll get a stoppage of play. 
But when you look at the the youth of this team, you, you really recognize that how dynamic High Z, Murphy, and Bilka can be. And enter, watch the enter, and the pause to come through the middle of the ice, the backhand dish to Kayla Barnes, the defender jumping down that right side of the ice. And again, for a young athlete to recognize, listen, I'm not going to blow wide here. I'm going to pull to the middle so that I can draw coverage to me. And then she dishes to Barnes. Ashton Bell on the loose puck. Back here at Team Canada. She's on part of the group last year in Brampton. She'll receive the pass at center. Looking for Stacey up high. Savannah Harmon. Beaten by Blair Turnbull. And she sends it on net. Leaving the post and it pops back. And Megan Keller will jump on it. You see Eden now taking a look up ice. Eden. Down low curl out in front. Trying to let the shot go is Eden. Back up her junior year with Wisconsin this year, Lacey Eden. Well, you can see the Americans having two on the puck. There was two on Blair Turnbull, and she needed a little bit of help there. You know, the Americans, especially when that puck goes in the neutral zone, will have a quick transition as well. Hiller Knight looking for a pass out in front. Knight 106 points now here at the Women's World. Gilday lets the shot go. Baby, all over it. Well, the physicality continues, and Laura Stacey is a strong woman as well, and she's looking to find ice here. And you can see Kelly Panich is trying to stay above her and rides her off into the board. So toe to toe here, and Kelly Panich really has a 200-foot game. I love the way she's so defensively responsible and how she approaches her check. For Stacey, who scored the empty net goal for Team Canada in the preliminary game last time, these two teams, but it wasn't enough. Knight and Kessel getting on the board in the final minute to force that shootout. It was Jamie Lee Rattery who scored that winner. Knight getting pushed up against the boards. Byron out of fast. Kind of points go for stepping in for help. Point to the point. Settled. Now Gilday lets the wrist go. Gets blocked in front. Gilday back on the loose puck. Fast battling hard against Kendall Point Schofield. Kristen O'Neill seeing if she can help out. Hillary Knight doing the same. On the angle that Kendall Point Schofield came in against Renata Fast. You can see she got really low, trying to be as strong as possible to try to separate Renata from the puck. Dawson Larocque will send it deep in the zone. She picked up her 50th assist with the national women's team back in Sarnia as part of the rivalry series where Canada completed the reverse sweep for the second year in a row against the United States. A tune-up here for the World Championship. Janicki on the turnover. Driving wide. Spins back. Looking for a pass outlet as Damian makes the stop. USA continuing the pressure here against Canada. Sims walks in. Through traffic. Still in control. Kirsten Sims. Her debut here at the World Championship. That's some physicality by Canada. Marie Philippe Poulin on the attack. She has Brianne Jenner with her. Jenner to Poulin. A great jack by Kayla Barnes. United States the other way. Janicki towards the end of her shift. On the outside, looks to send it deep in the zone, and she'll go for a change. Layla Edwards now pressuring for the United States. Poulin trying to chip it ahead. Nicole Gosling in control at wide for Canada. Looking to cut through the net. It gets by Kayla Barnes. The college star is going to work. Well, Nicole Gosling allows for the line change to happen by carrying that puck in. And... Turnover, Spooner. Just along for the ride here, Cheryl. And so are we, Kenzie. <laughs> absolutely loving this back and forth entertaining action. As the USA chance begin here, the United States has had quality chances through the first 10 minutes against Team Canada. Jocelyn Rock working it down low, looking for Emily Clark. No! Bilka to the point. Van Harmon looks to walk the line. No! Harmon near side for Keller. Another chance. Spooner looking to take advantage. Emily Spooner leading the PWHL in goals and points right now. Yeah, she's been incredible and, and really a season MVP up to this point just by the way she's played and really showing her net front presence and her ability to find pucks in the blue paint. Kelly Panic looking for Curl. A snap pass to the far side. And an excellent read by Julia Gosling. Flush off the box. Defeated the other way. Blair Turnbull now on the outside. Through the legs and a dance by Blair Turnbull to get in and around the United States. Ambrose jumps up in the play, looking to cut the ice in half. Now Scamaro going one on two. Haley Scamaro with the backhand shot. And from Getzville, New York, Haley Scamaro looking to win gold on home soil. 
An excellent chance for her. Well, she hasn't played a ton of minutes here, but she's been effective. She's just so strong on her skates. Harvey looking for Carpenter. Going to Schofield on the backhand. Now an near side pass for Julia Gosling. Scored in her first ever game here with Team Canada against Finland. Kayla Barnes now on the far side. Barnes lets the wrist shot go. Blocker saved by Davian. Well, Kayla Barnes saw that Hillary Knight was coming down that weak side pose with her frame, and I'd be taking the shot from there too if I saw Hillary Knight driving the net. Blair Turnbull down the far side, trying to get through the legs of Harmon again. And that was the exact same move that Blair Turnbull tried on Haley Wynn, and Savannah Harmon denies it. Nye taking down the rock at center. Two veterans toe to toe at center ice. Feeding it deep into the zone now as Megan Keller picks it up. Now, Sims on the far side has numbers. Kirsten Sims finding Janicki. One more. It won't be enough as the two youngins look for Kendall Coyne Schofield at center. Now, Brian Jenner, a three on two unfolding for Canada. Jenner holds, looking for Poulet on the one time shot. Layla Edwards with a great stick. Malte cuts back. Malte taking a look. Davian will come out to help the loose puck in her own zone. And in one end, it was Kirsten Sims coming down with the puck. And it's so funny, she was up against Brianne Jenner. Not sure she recognized she wasn't the defender. Heisey looking for a pass out in front. And now Malte the other way. A Burlington, Ontario. Malte flips it ahead, looking to chase to get by Harvey. She will. Malte looking for a pass out to Spooner. Stolen away by Haley Wynn. Murphy, draw pass to Taylor Heisey. Your side for Harvey, it'll be offside as Murphy almost does the splits. And it has been intense here in the opening frame between Canada and the United States. Some rough stuff in Utica, New York. I know it's up. Canadian summers just hit different with the Tim's ice cap in hand. Introducing the new caramel ice cap with gooey caramel. And the return of the crunchy Oreo double stuff ice cap. All across the country, memories are made with ice cap. Always summer with Tim's. I just asked. Yeah, I asked. We just asked. Is Ozempic right for you? Just ask your doctor. <laughs> Little Caesars Chicago-style pizza is loaded with toppings. On toppings. On toppings. Fully loaded Chicago-style pizza only at Little Caesars. Chicago, Chicago. Mm. Oh, I'm cool. Well, Kenzie, I feel like it's a track meet here. And the transitions are so quick because it's five on five play. And look at this to the net. And it's going to be Janicki as a power forward who puts it back to the middle of the ice. It's going to go off Fillier skate. Davies going one way, kicks it out to the left. I think it was missing the net. And then Blair Turnbull one on one. And look at that pull through the legs on Haley Wynn below the goal line and tries to put the puck back out to Stacy. But you recognize that Turnbull gets swarmed the moment she kicks it back. We are still 0-0 here in the opening frame between Canada and the United States. The last four years of women are played. It's been a split back and forth. And then here in front of the United States bench, so to get up. Taking a look, Murphy. She'll join in and play. Harvey looking to feed it ahead. Ford builds up. Caught up at center. Harvey will pull it back. Looking near side. Built up. As Heisey in for support. And Heisey, the MVP in her debut tournament back in 2022. She'll go for a change. Well, and she's so effective in the face-off dot as well. And you've got a, a group in Carpenter that's at 71%. Murphy on the backhand. Can't get the shot off. An excellent stop by Ella Shelton. And there will be a penalty on this play. John and Erie counting her numbers. They're both going to go. Murphy can't believe it. Skimura and Ella Shelton to the box on the extra play. This likely be Quint. This can be a coincidental, and you're seeing Megan Keller give a bump to Abby Murphy. I've often called her the disruptor in the game, and she's gonna drive the net and she looks to shovel it there. And Ella Shelton's gonna finish that check. 
can see Renee yeah, Debian getting snowed there, but as she pulls and team she's trying Canada, to take it to the net, 17, she puts it on the back end and she's going to get taken check. into the board. Team USA, number 16. And then Abby Rock. Murphy's going to get a little bit of help from Skimura, who is going to come in and give Ella Shelton a shove as well, just defending her teammate. And I like that they're both going to the box here. This five on five play mm -hmm. has simply been outstanding in this physical game. And this is what you get with the women's game at five on five when it's not consistently disrupted by penalties. Fast, physical, skilled hockey is what we are seeing here in the first period. Skumara sits for two for roughing, Shelton two for cross-checking. Five on five play off the face-off. Lacey Eden not able to get the shot off. Brianne Jenner picks it up. Eden hard on the back check, looks to be first on it. Tries to feed it ahead for Harmon. She'll run around for Kelly Panic, up for Curl. Well, Rock now jumping in, pucks loose. Canada's captain. In on the puck, it's decorated player here with Team Canada, Marie Philippe Poulin. I'm watching the transition skating of Megan Miller. She was all the way up in the play, looking to get hit on the weak side, and she was able to close her gap and get back fast. Well, some great hand eye coordination by Poulin. She didn't even know it, but the faceoff will come outside the United States and 0 0 between Canada and the United States. Join the fans of Canada's game across the country and around the world and be a Hockey Canada insider. Receive news and features about Team Canada, events, promotions, and much more. Sign up at HockeyCanada.ca slash insider. Why aren't there any girls playing? Oh, I can taste the changer. Mix and match any two or more pizzas and sides for just $8.99 each. Like when pizza night's more like pizza and lava cakes night. Or pasta and stuffed cheesy bread night. Or we're gonna need a bigger table night. Mix and match Canada's favorite pizza and more at Domino's. Well, there, well there's no question that sick infractions will need to be called. But when it's physical and both teams are going toe-to-toe -to -toe and fighting for a puck, listen, both of these teams are evenly matched in terms of their structure, their physicality, their strength, their skill. So they're being allowed to, to dictate the play. And I wonder often if the officials have a conversation before a game like this, knowing the skill set and strength that's between these two teams and the, that it is evenly matched, that they do allow more to go. It has been an entertaining first period, and you know the players love it. This, These are the games you live for, the type of hockey you want to be playing. And it's on display in Utica as the faceoff comes down into the United States zone to the right of Frankel. Sarah Nurse will take the draw here for Team Canada. Nurse wins it back into the hands of the United States. So points go field to Hillary Knight. Knight picked up four goals against Team Canada in the last two meetings on the world stage. Carpenter lets the shot go. Gilding falling up. The puck's loose and fast jumps on it. Under five to go in period number one, I say it will be the call. So we'll head back and Amber Nate Davance territory, who's been busy here in period number one. Well, right off the face off, it's about jumping and look at the jump to it and the kick right back to Hillary Knight. She's going to come into the coverage and look at the crossover speed of Alex Carpenter in the shield. She knows that she's got Hillary Knight driving the net and she's able to get a stick on it. And Renee makes the save. Again, showing and tracking, holding on to pucks. Off the face off, Harvey. Top of the circles, tries to fight off Spooner. She'll let the wrist shot go, looking for the loose puck. Fast plays it to the corner. Malte looks to jump on it. She'll feed it to center oh, ice. When you saw Abby Murphy going into the corner, you know that she loves this type of game, doesn't she? <laughs> Seven of the ten Patty Kazmaier finalists this year are out here on the ice amongst Team Canada and the United States. Abby Murphy led the nation in penalty minutes as well. Slap shot by Taylor Heisey. What a release. By the young forward, let it go. Lake City, Minnesota, she can shoot. We still await our opening goal. Holly Clark looks to find the loose puck. Harvey now looking for Murphy on the stretch pass. Ambrose feeds it to the far side. Janicki now cuts back. Clark on the loose puck. 
Stacey heads front for it. Free agent signing with Montreal alongside Davian and Marie Philippe Poulet. Well, Stacey was swarmed right away, so you know that she's got that linear speed, but she wasn't able to gain any of it because she was closed on so quickly from the back, and then it allows the defender to stand up as well. And how about Taylor Heisey's slap shot? I mean, we know that she scores goals. She's got four, 11 points so far with PWHL Minnesota. And she lets this one absolutely rip. It goes off the blocker of Amrene Debian, and she doesn't see where that rebound went, but she got all of it. An excellent shot, and you just look at her assist totals. She is such a great distributor as well, both in the PWHL and on the international stage. Amber, it's off the face-off. Tries to let the shot go. Well, Heise really does it all. I mean, right from the dot where she's at 74% coming into this game as well. So possession, distribution, and then you can see how she can wire the puck. First ever player to be drafted in the PWHL, Taylor Heise. Edwards to Savannah Harmon, looking up for Tessa Janicki. Armin will skate into it through traffic. Rattray steals it away. Limited minutes, but still making a difference. Jamie Lee Rattray through three games with Team Canada from Canada. She was the difference maker in the preliminary game last time. These two teams saw each other. Her Jenner scoring the goals. Well, she can come in and she can make a difference, as you mentioned, with two assists so far in this tournament, but an average of six minutes. So the ability to come in, she recognizes where she is. She can slot in. She's slotting in with Poulin and Villiers right now. So from the top line all the way through, she can execute a role and she can change momentum in a game. That's 13th forward in the game. Jamie Lee Rattray as she goes to work here. Win, finding Kelly Panic. Stretch pass, curl now at center. Feeds it ahead for Skimora. She gets pushed up against the boards by Gosling. Now Ashton Bell has some room. She'll find Gosling on the far side. A loose puck. Ashton Bell, and a sigh of relief for Team Canada. And I like that Gosling was looking to come up the ice, right? She had an opportunity to move with the puck, and she just, look, she's got her head up. She's looking, and the puck just goes underneath her blade. And then you see that Skimura. Skimura just uses one hand to be able to push that puck a little bit ahead because she wants to come through and get to that open space. Nice job by Ashton Bell, a great skater. Come back and close. Nurse engaging in the battle and behind Davian. Carpenter now chasing. Spooner looking up ice, finding Emma Malte. Malte down the near side board, stops up, finding Nurse as the trailer, looking for the backhand shot. And points Gofield as she gets steered to the corner. That puck floats in the United States bench with 2.04 to go in this first period. I had an opportunity to catch up with Emma Malte and, and talk to her about her role on this team. And she's another athlete that's been real versatile, whether she's playing the two hole, the three hole, or on the flank. She's she's really showed the confidence this year. And I feel like she's found her home in terms of that line with Natalie Spooner and Sarah Nurse. And I know I've said it a few times, but she scored all the way through her numbers at Ohio State, now in the PWHL Toronto. And it's really showing on the international stage this tournament. Well, she picked up two goals in the final round of series game between Canada and the United States. We're talking a lot about the comfortability with her line with the group and how much of a factor that has been for her. But it was that line that really turned the tide. In front, Stacey for the, looking for the loose puck. Now Bilka trying to punch it ahead, looking to chase Shelton, but she'll get there first. Blair Turnbull working hard along the boards, looking for a pass to center. That puck gets flipped down low. Shelton won't rip it around for Clark. Spins back, finding Turnbull. It's been a better line for Team Canada. Last few will change it from the Olympic Games as well. Stacey, Turnbull, and Clark. And you also know that Turnbull can be a shutdown player, right? She's one of those hard players. She's hard on the puck, and you've got Emily Clark, who is expensively responsible as well. And Stacey's got the speed. You've got left-right combination. It's a tale of two teams. The United States average age 24, Team Canada 28. This is the oldest group we've seen Team Canada bring to a world championship. You look at the United States, you've got 14 college players. Team Canada has four. And yet they go toe-to-toe, -to -toe and it is just the best hockey. Well, and John Robleski has gone really young, the talent of this group, and he is the coach through Milan. And I have to figure that he's getting these ready 
his players ready to, to mature, get the experience on this landscape so that they can be at their best when they hit the Olympics. And Layla Edwards looking on, hoping to compete at an Olympic Games with a high shot off the face-off. Stoppage of play. 51.6 seconds remaining. So we'll reset here in the face-off. Well, and right from the draw, and you can see the hard work along the board. It's going to be Pilan, and you can see that Renata Fast recognizes she's got the lane open. Philly is in that inner slot area trying to find and collect, get her stick on that rebound here. And Franco, really aggressive. Scoring the final seconds of a game has really been the M.O. for these two teams in the last few games. So with 46 to go, you never know what can happen. Well, and this is a great combination of having Poulin and Jenner and Villiers all aligned together because you've got a, a lefty in Poulin who's 85% in the dot. You've got a right-handed former center in Jenner who can also put up some incredible numbers. So they have many variations off of the draw depending on whether it's the left or the right. And so Jenner will take the draw for Team Canada. Pucks loose along the boards. Curls fighting for it. Fast will pull it back, slaps it to the far side for the Rock. Trying to set it on net, hitting the skate of Curl. Battling behind, down low. Poulin trying to win. Panic now. Looking on as Haley Wynn picks up the puck. And behind Franco, she'll feed it up high. Now we'll get rid around. Britta Curl with a chance the other way. Curl trying to get in behind Renata Fast, and she stands tall. That is a great one-on-one -on -one by Renata Fast. She is one of the greatest skaters in the world. You know that Megan Keller is very efficient on her edges as well, but she closes so fast. And Britta Curl has got full speed looking for the cutback, and you can see the position that Renata Fast has, making sure it doesn't go through her legs because her toes have turned, and make sure she takes the body. Renata Fast making her debut at the Women's World last time the United States hosted this tournament in 2017 in Plymouth, Michigan. USA went undefeated for the second year in a row. Here they are again, defending gold on home soil. The two battle in front of the United States bench as time expires in period number one. That will do it. We still await our opening goal in Utica as the rough stuff continues after this closing whistle. Officials just making sure each team heads to the respective doors. <laughs> They're just getting the crowd into this one. Much more to come in our first intermission. Executive Director of the PWHL Players Association, Brian Burke, will join our Tessa Benham. And we'll leave it to Megan Bosek, Sammy Joe Small to break down all the action for you. Stay with us. You're watching the 2024 Women's World Hockey Championship Canada versus the United States in Utica. From our earliest days here at the Hockey Hall of Fame, we've wanted to be a place where hockey fans could come and really experience the game. Some would say we were interactive before interactive was interactive. Now, did we make some mistakes? Now, maybe a couple, but we think we've really nailed it this time. Shoot it, save it, call it. Only at the Hockey Hall of Fame. At Burger King, stretch your dollar into an $8 meal so you can stretch lunch into lunch. Get an extra long cheeseburger or original chicken sandwich plus fries and a drink, all for just 8 bucks. Spring into savings at the Spring into Action Sale on now at Home Hardware. Save up to 25% on select Scott's Lawn Care. And get a great price on Decorator Venture Deck Boards. Only at Home Hardware and Building Centers. Here's how. Payment made easy with RBC and Apple Watch. Offer extended. Get the new Apple Watch when you switch to RBC. You never feel happy. You never feel happy. The future is not just going to happen. You have to make it. And if you want a successful business, all it takes is an idea, and now becomes the future. A future where you grew a dream into a reality. It's waiting for you mere minutes away. The future is nothing but power, and it's all yours. The all-new GoDaddy Arrow. Get your business online in minutes with the power of AI. When you have two days to paint four stories, do it quicker. 
when your cat uses the wall as a nail file, do it better. And when colors scream from every direction, do it smarter. Do it with Dulux. Oh, organic cotton sheets. Organic? Are we sleeping on them or eating them? 40 bucks. See, I would have led with that. Deal so good, everyone approves. Home Sense. Leo Vegas Online Casino. Experts in live dealer entertainment. Roulette, Blackjack, Baccarat, and all your favorite live dealer games. This is where the Lions play. LeoVegas.com, King of Casino. Download the app for free. Thousands of Canadians like Maria test our products for quality over and over and over again. So you know they're built to last. Only the best are in the batch. State zeros on the scoreboard, but tons of hits out there. Leading the charge is Abby Murphy. She's standing by with Julia Tashery. Abby, your team came flying out of, get, out of the gates there. Tell me about the motivation. Is it playing Canada? Is it playing on home soil? Yeah, we know what's going to come at us. So um, we've been waiting for this game ever since tournament started. So um, for us, it's just kind of doing the little details, get them tired, uh, kind of get our, our feet moving right out of the gate. So um, it's been fun, but. Uh, it's just the first period, so we're excited for the rest. You're really good at getting under Canada's skin. How does that give you an advantage? Yeah, it's fun. Um, it's my game, but I'll, I'm also trying to stay focused on what I can do uh, as a player and uh, get as many opportunities for my team. But yeah, I think just being an agitator like they say I am, so um, just kind of rattling them, kind of getting them to make any mistakes, dumb mistakes that, that we can, so we'll see. All tied up after one period. What's it going to take to break the ice here? Put one in the back of the net. Uh, just keep wearing them down. Uh, ultimately, um, like I said, the little details are going to are going to play come in come in full hand. So um, yeah, good luck, Abby. Thank you very much. Welcome inside our first intermission. Hooey! Deep breath. You guys catch your breath yet? I felt like I was out of breath just watching that. Testament up, Megan Bozak, Sammy Joe Small. The game we expected to see between these two, and quite frankly, the tone and the precedent was set quite literally almost at the drop of the puck, Megan, with physical play. And it was Team Canada that actually started that physical play with Renata Fast. She is not afraid to step up ever to that, but now we will see Canada trying to get number 37, Abby Murphy. Abby Murphy even said it. She likes to get under Canada skin. She's an agitator out there. She's always ready to put her head and shoulders down, but she's been speedy today with the puck. But you have to expect that Canada has to take her away. She loves a physical play. She loves finding those battles, and she's not afraid to get a little rough and tough. But both teams, the first period, did not disappoint. You see bodies flying out there, but it makes for an exciting, a fast paced game, and that first goal is going to be sweet. In that interview, Abby Murphy looked like she was seething. Yeah. Like she was like swaying back and forth, foaming at the mouth, just ready to go. Yeah, and I, I almost feel like if you're Czechia watching this game, the way your game was refereed against Canada, you have to be a little bit disappointed in the consistency of refereeing. However, I'm not complaining about anything I'm seeing out here. I just hope it continues to be that for all the other teams that want to compete with the top two teams in the world. Now, Andrene Debian was busy. USA out shooting Canada double in that period. What did you find? Uh, what? How would you break down her play, Sammy? Well, she faced 12 shots, but I would say the Americans had the majority of the zone time, probably 75% yeah. of the time, was in and around her. So she was very, very busy today. But they count on Anne Renee Debian to be a force back there. She's confident. She's commanding. She really shut out this really loud crowd, and she was dialed in. She anticipates really well, recovers after rebounds, and she's finding pucks through traffic. She has remarkable reflexes and stares down some of the best shooters in the world. She has put on an impressive display in net. And unlike the sun today, she has been visible all game. <laughs> the eclipse. Oh, man. They're loving it, aren't you? But I would touch on that. That Taylor Heisey slap shot has eyes. 
Yes. And to stop a shot like that in the first period, and Renee Davion is very confident right now. Dialed so in for sure. Very, very dialed in. Any teammate that has played with Anne Renee Davion tells you you don't want to play against her in big games because she just gets bigger and better between the pipes. All right, we're going to take a quick break, try and catch our breath again. Dab some sweat away. We're working hard over here. We've got a very special guest joining us in the next block. Executive Director of the PWHLPA, Brian Burke, will sit down. As kids, they told us to follow our dreams. I want to make candles. But the minute we started chasing them, they told us we were being unrealistic. Told us to think about our future. Said it was too late for us. And passions don't pay bills. But what they didn't know is that dreamers make their own victory. Smart, you can save up to 20% on your dog's first groom with the Salon Welcome Package, so they can be by your side for all the moments that matter. Anything Pet Smart, for anything for pets. Buying a car is pretty daunting. But the price badge on Auto Trader really gave me the confidence that I was putting my money to good use. I think these features definitely boost the confidence. The price badge is awesome. The answer is Auto Trader. Taste of Buffalo is at Popeye's for a limited time. Try the Buffalo Crispy Chicken Wrap or the Loaded Buffalo Poutine before they're gone. When you have two days to paint four stories, do it quicker. When your cat uses the wall as a nail file, do it better. And when colors scream from every direction, do it smarter. Do it with Dulux. Hockey is more than a sport. It builds self-esteem, teamwork, and lifelong friendships. I just wouldn't be me if it wasn't for hockey. And I think if I lost that, I think I'd lose a big part of me. Without the Hockey Canada Foundation Assist Fund, thousands of kids like Lamar won't be able to access the game. Donate now to help us ensure every child across Canada has the chance to play. Score between Canada and the United States 20 minutes into this one, but boy, oh boy, it has been entertaining. Physicality, big hits, lots of chances. Utica, you're getting your money worth as we welcome you inside Adirondack Bank Center. Hello, everyone. I'm Tessa Benham, joined by a very special guest, Executive Director of the PWHLPA, Brian Burke. Good friend. Nice to sit down next to you again, chat some hockey. I feel like it's been a while since we've actually been able to catch up. It has been a while. I remember the first time that you interviewed me, though, in my office. It was way back when you were with the Leafs. It was one of my first times I broke into the industry, actually. Thank you for being so kind then, and thank you for being so kind now joining me here. Let's talk a little bit about Utica and why you're here. Well, I'm here in my capacity as executive director of the Players Association. I came in last night, saw the game last night. I'll see this game tonight, and then i got to head back to Toronto tomorrow. What, do you, what, do you, what are your thoughts on this game so far? I'm going to assume that you just love what you see. Well, I, I love <laughs> the way the game is played right now. It's a much more physical game. Yep. And people who are watching the PWHL for the first time are commenting. All of them say, oh, it's so physical. You haven't been paying attention, folks. It's been getting more physical every year for the last 10 years. Yeah, absolutely. Well, with the training, right? These ladies are training with a lot of the NHL players. They're, they're specimens out there. So, yes, they do want to incorporate that physical play. So how how is the... PWHL or the PWHLPA ensuring that you know the feeder leagues in the NCAA or U sport um, are they are they going to incorporate phys that type of physical play in in years to come or has there been discussions on that yet not yet uh, that has to come next that has to flow to the NCAA and the different levels of hockey below the PHPL or uh, I think that from my perspective this is the way the women want to play yeah and I think it's going to be important that, that that be reinforced at every level. They can't suddenly turn this on. You've got to learn to hit and take hits 
for it when you're young. Especially, and it'll shape, it'll change the shape of the game and the way it's played as well. Yep. Um, and I like the fact that it was the women that brought that forward and asked for that from the league. These are things that we want. These are the things that we're going to need. Now, as the director of the PWHLPA, the Players Association, when all this was getting going, what were some of the first main things you wanted to get in order and laid down in order for it to be successful? Well, I want to make full disclosure. I had nothing to do with this league. <laughs> all the formation, all the work was done. I can't take any credit for any of that. I joined late to the party. Well, my job is really to get things going off the ground. We had some hiccups. Management working with the league has been great about solving our problems as they've developed. There's been a very collaborative relationship so far, but my job basically is let's get this off the ground and hit the ground running, and we've done that. What are some of the things that the PA wants to get done moving forward here? Well, I think the next thing now is that we've got to figure out how much hitting and how much body contact is allowed. My view is we've gone as far as we want to go. We, it gets much rougher than this. People start getting hurt. I think we lose some fan interest. Mm -hmm. So I think people like the physical play. They don't want it to go full contact. Speaking of fan interest, were you surprised at all in the interest in the league and the, how much they've been garnering? Anyone who tells you they're not surprised by this is a liar. This has exceeded all of our expectations. The fan response has been great. The broadcast response has been great. It's been a great ride. we got to keep it going now. Canada, USA, let's talk a little bit about the rivalry and what you like best about it. Any memories for you that, that you like about it? It could be on the men's game, the women's side. Any rivalry memories stick well, out to you? Uh, I was GM of the uh, U.S. <laughs> team in Vancouver yeah. when the Canadian referee kicked the puck to the Team Canada player, Jerome McGinley, <laughs> who then passed it to the Team Canada player, Sidney Crosby, and scored the winning goal. <laughs> Is that how it happened? You could... <laughs> I love having you on and talking hockey with you, Brian. Thank you very much for taking the time with us. Always a joy to see you. Enjoy the rest of the game. I'm sure I'll see you post game. Thank you. Cheers. All right. Nothing, nothing as mentioned between Canada, but there's a lot of action going on out there. We've got a good one, people. This is why this is the best rivalry in sport. It's Canada. It's USA at the Women's Worlds here in Utica, New York. As kids, they told us to follow our dreams. I want to make candles. But the minute we started chasing them, they told us we were being unrealistic. Told us to think about our future. Said it was too late for us. And passions don't pay bills. But what they didn't know is that dreamers make their own victory. Welcome to the Waverhood. With Wayfair, finding your style is fun. Yes, when the music stops, grab in the chair. It doesn't matter if it's your outdoor style or not. I'm sorry, Carl. This is me in chair form. I don't see it. Oh, come on. This one's perfect for you. But you love it. I told you we should have done a pinata. I explained it so many times. Mm -hmm. They're not sitting. Rocks. You need to sit down. Wayfair, every style, every home. Macaroni or cheese? Don't you mean macaroni and cheese? No. No? No. Limited to cash back or points? Leave limits behind with Avion Rewards. Get cash back and points and savings all in one program. Don't let airborne allergens scare you. Arius provides fast relief of your 15 worst allergy symptoms so you can love the air again. Arius. At Domino's, mix and match any two or more pizzas and sides for just $8.99 each. Like when pizza night's more like pizza and lava cakes night. Or pasta and stuffed cheesy bread night. Or we're gonna need a bigger table night. Mix and match Canada's favorite pizza and more at Domino's. Meet Norman. He's part Jack Russell and part Tornado. Meet the Bissell Crosswave Hydro Steam. It's part vacuum, mop, steamer, and tornado chaser. Bissell, a new breed of clean. I mean to fight this war and win it. Not against the king, and I will pay it back a hundred times over. You must crush this beast at its head. The path to victory now is one of violence. To war, then. We fight for our queen!
Still waiting on the first goal to be scored between Canada and the United States and Group A action here in Utica. I mean, we got the shots posted, but let's be honest, we all want to see the hits. There's been a lot of them. Second period puck drop. Let's get up to Kenzie and Cheryl. Over to you, ladies. Couldn't agree more, Tessa, as we welcome you back inside Adirondack Bank Center. That was the most exciting scoreless period oh, of hockey I've yes. ever seen. I'm with you, Kenzie. When you look at the last two tournaments the United States has hosted, they won both preliminary games. We are still 0-0 here as we enter period number two. All right, ladies, great opening 20. Let's go for 40 more here. Six down. 40 more. Here we go. Jocelyn Morocco will tape it deep into the zone. Megan Keller will chase after it on the far side. Brian Jenner will pressure. Kept in the zone now. Long shot by the point. Desvillier holds the blue line. When they're able to get in, Poulin wins that opening faceoff. She was one for five through that first period. Alex Carpenter was seven for ten. Jenner on the outside. Let's a shot. Go! Blocker save. The puck was loose. Alex Carpenter steering it to neutral ice. Canada with early chances here to start period number two, and it was reversed in period number one. USA had a few good chances on debut. In the zone for the United States, that'll all table chase off the glass and out. That will go deep into Canada's zone. Icing will be the call. Well, veteran leader knows how to take the stick, and Alex Carpenter knew that it was Marie-Philippe Poulin on the doorstep throwing the puck to the net, and the rebound comes out, and Alex Carpenter just steers it to safety to the corner before Poulin can get her stick on it. Good thing it was an empty cage. Alex Carpenter in her ninth world championship here from North Reading, Massachusetts. A game changer for the United States. Shelton beating it to the far side. Ambrose drags and shoots. Frankel will hold on and get the whistle. When you can look at the possession numbers, especially in the offensive end, Canada wins the draw, and Aaron Ambrose is able to, to collect that puck after it goes D to D. But you can see Natalie Spooner getting net front, trying to get in the way of Aaron Frankel. I do think she saw that and was able to hold on to it. Natalie Spooner, one of the best in the game. Face off to the left of Frankel. Heisey taking the draw here for the United States. Stuck at her feet. She'll push it ahead, but it gives a wind-up chance for Sarah Nurse. Shelton picks it up on the near side. Shelton waits. From Ingersoll, Ontario. She'll feed it deep into the zone. Barnes will feed it further. Nurse now with some room. Takes a look. Goes for a skate. Top of the circle. Nurse lets the high shot go. Barnes will jump on it early. Spins back, trying to outwork Natalie Spooner. A size difference between the two, but equally as physical and strong. Well, you'll see that Canada is entering the zone and putting pucks in that, especially when you see someone like Natalie Spooner setting up shop atop of the blue paint. Caroline Harvey looking to pick this puck up. She's got the time goal in the gold medal game to start off that third period. And it all changed in the final three minutes and ten seconds. Hillary Knight completing her hat trick. Kayla Barnes with the empty net, and it was a 6-3 gold medal win for the United States. To the center. One of the things we noticed, Kenzie, in that first period was the quick transitions of both teams. The moment that they were able to, to get the puck, it was off their stick, and everyone off of the puck was going north, and that was so effective, creating odd player rushes and made for such an entertaining and fast first period. Caroline Harvey averaging just under 22 minutes so far, leading her way for her group. So, still so young. Just 21 years old for Pelham, New Hampshire. Faceoff will be to the left of Frankel. Kristen O'Neill will take the draw for Team Canada. Billy Panic joining in. Pushed ahead. Redacne will jump on it. Long shot by the point off the pad of Frankel. Julia Gosling flicking it to the far side. Fast feeding it to the corner. Harvey looking on the loose puck. She takes a look. Backhand pass for Britta Curl. Kristen O'Neill in the corner, feeding it out front. Serdakne will pick it up on the far side. Serdakne letting the shot go. O'Neill in control, back in. The puck will get sent to the far side. Well, and I'd like that Troy Ryan put this line out there with Gosling, Serdakne, and Kristen O'Neill in the offensive zone faceoff. Daniel Serdakne coming in with those shots on net for Team Canada. Just her second tournament here. Azella Shelton takes a look up ice. Rudaki beating Poulin. She'll chip it deep into the zone. That's a Janicki. And the two battle hard. Poulin, her 92nd game against the United States in her career. Looking for a win here tonight. Azella Shelton will glove it down. Taking a look. Shelton driving. Let's the shot go. Hitting the stick of Haley Wynn. It gets redirected off the backboards. 
I think she had the shot originally, and then she took one step to her left, and her angle closed. Seeing Jamie Lee Ratchley out there again with Brianne Jenner and Poulin. Janicki the other way, trying to get the shot off. Dave Bien will hold on. When you create turnovers, it's because you have good positioning with your high forward in the offensive zone, and it's exactly the positioning of Snow Neal and an active stick that's able to get this turnover. She keeps her feet moving. She's able to possess the puck, and Canada's able to sustain pressure, and he works its way high to, to the point, and you can see that shot, and Chris Snow Neal, a little patience there. The spinorama to the forehand might have worked, but some nice stall there and work by that entire line. Keller looking for Hillary Nice. Down below, Kendall points go field. Kim Renata Fox, she gets pinned up against the boards. A two-on-two battle -two to the right of Dave Vian. Area Dave Vian has only had one goal on the 46 shots she has seen so far this tournament. Carpenter for Kendall points go field. She looks up ice. Fox loose, Knight looking to send it right back down. Go checked away by Low Rock. Still looking to do the same. Point Schofield gets pinned by Fast. The two just continuing to battle hard here deep in Canada's zone. Here, Nurse through center, finding space. Here comes Nurse on the outside. Off a stick, up a flutter to the corner. LaRock chipping ahead for Malte. With space, trying to find a pass for Bourbonnais. Jimmy Bourbonnais, Canada's seventh defender here so far in the tournament. Can't have an eye for her on, on the offensive blue line. That tends to be where she manipulates it and she can open up some lanes with her skating. I think she's got real nice deception as well. You know, it's tough when you get limited minutes as a defender. You've got to come in and be confident enough to make a first class and be deceptive. But Jamie Bourbonnais, who went in the second round overall, ninth overall to PWHL New York, is having a good season there with three goals and seven assists. Face off to the left of Dave Yang. The draw will be Blair Turmo for Team Canada. She'll win it back for Bourbonnais. Back to the Cornell. Just about two hours here for Utica and Ithaca, New York. Brand Jenner, Kristen O'Neill, graduates as well. Izzy out in front. Abby Murphy with a setup. And that was the play of Bilka down low below the goal line. And I really liked her play. She's tenacious and she's got quick feet. Shelton regrouping pass, finding a full Gosling. She'll send it down. Icing gets waved off, so it's a foot race. Blair Turnbull will challenge Aaron Frankel. Abby Murphy now. On the near side, Murphy drops it back, looking for Barnes, and a great stick by Laura Stacey Canada the other way. Gosling caught up at center, looking to feed Stacey. Caroline Harvey will pull it back. O'Neill watching on Caroline Harvey, weighing her options. She'll hold on. Shelton off the near side boards. Lacey Eden getting pushed up against by Julia Gosling. Maybe it comes out to play the puck. Pass for Shelton. Now looking up for Gosling. And you see that four check with two split coming at the defenders, forcing that rim again. That's exactly what the Americans want. They want that puck on the boards and to pounce on it. Win goes D to D, finding Gilday. That gets sent down. I sing waves off again. Dave Bien will play it. It's caught up by Curl, Nicole Gosling. Good time. To the point, Win. Off for a pass, finding Lacey Eden. She'll keep the deep in the zone, giving time for Curl. Eden, spin move, trying for a shot. Get up, get up, get up. Good, 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 Win now, good. keeping it in the zone. Stepping down, Win engaging in the offense. Now Julia Gosling, with the end of her shift, will get the red line and flip it down. That's a smart play by Gosling. Just a, a soft dump into the corner, allowing Sir Daphne to gain some speed to be able to, to get heavy on the forecheck. But we're going to have our first penalty of the game. United States will go to the power play. Janicki looking to take advantage of the delayed call on the way, but we'll get a touch by Team Canada. The United States will head to the power play when we come back. It's Canada, the United States, and Utica. on ESSO to be the place between places, connecting you to what's next. Ladies, 
We're here because we deserve to be here. Every rep in the gym, every ship on the ice has fueled that difference and brought us here. No matter what stood in our way, it's time to leave our mark and put it all on the line. Let's show them this is our game, our time. Gatorade. Danielle Serdaki is going to get the first penalty of the game, and it was off a, a soft dunk by Julia Gosling, and it was a race. Layla Edwards was in on the puck, and you can see her just getting taken in by Sir Daphne, and so Sir Daphne knows right there, and power play, that's three for 11 right now for the United States is gonna look to get to work. Second best in the tournament, the United States number is two of their power play goals. Hillary Knight netting them, and Alex Carpenter with the other. Face off to the right of Davian. These two teams met at the preliminary game at last year's tournament. It was Hannah Bilka that opened the scoring on the power play. Carpenter looking to win this battle. Edwards looking to Janicki. Play out in front. And Janicki will battle hard down low. USA to the power play. As we still await our opening goal. Carpenter taking her time, finding Carolyn Harvey, working up high. Carpenter jumps down in the bumper position. Now on the far side, Edwards taking a look. Down low pass. Hillary Knight. Looking for a play out in front. Now down low. Knight in control. Finding Janicki. Hillary Knight scanning. Turns back. Doesn't like what she sees. Harvey. Top of the blue line. Walking down. Let's over shot go. Redirects her angle. Well, the power play looks to operate with two up high and three across down low and then they'll activate Alex Carpenter off of it and they walk into a 1-3-1 one, one, and they want that lane open for Harvey now that Knight has found her way to the paint and Alex Carpenter in that inner slot. Face off one back by Team Canada. Shelton looking to send it all the way around and she will. USA will retreat. Harvey looking to pick it up. Stacy pressuring. Near side pass for Alex Carpenter. She'll take a look. In comes Janicki. With speed, drops it back, looking for Edwards. Stacy pressuring now, keeping things to the perimeter. Carpenter looking for the loose puck. Harvey snaps it for Hillary Knight. Knight on the power play. A slap shot gets blocked by Shelton. Knight still in control. Needs a down low for Janicki. The work two working it below the goal line. Now for Edwards. For 45 seconds to go here on the United States power play. Well, you see a block shot by Ella Shelton, and you see Laura Stacey with a real active stick and still on the hunt, trying to kill some valuable seconds, staying on the puck, where you have even numbers through the neutral ice to defend your blue line. That's a, a real nice job by number seven. Park the nurse. Now on the ice for Canada's penalty kill as Alex Carpenter looks to head up ice. Under 25 seconds to go here on the United States power play. Round up fast with the spin move. Short-handed lets the shot go just wide. Nurse following it up with another shot. Carpenter. Near side for Hannah Bilka. At center, picks up the loose puck. Bilka looking up ice. On the outside, trying to outwork fast. She'll drop it back. And time will expire. Canada back to five on five. Out comes Danielle Serdaphne. Shots landing for the United States. All in the power play. In comes Jocelyn LaRock. Drops it straight in the hands of Taylor Heisey, so she'll pick up the loose puck. Um, you don't want Heisey to have speed underneath the puck because when she does, she's very, very effective. She gets to the middle of the ice, and she's so dynamic left to right. She makes things happen. And another penalty on the way here as Harmon wants to have a few words with Jocelyn LaRock. Abby Murphy taking a spill here along the blue line. And the United States will head straight back to the power play. Jocelyn LaRock, the veteran defender, will take a seat for Team Canada. Well, Jocelyn LaRock is going to get the illegal hit on Abby Murphy, standing up at the blue line. Jocelyn LaRock, who's already has eight minutes in penalties in the tournament so far. You can see she just steps up into her, and she no longer has the puck. And that's going to be uh, the second penalty of the game. And now Canada will get some work. One for eight on the power play so far in this tournament. Or look at special teams. We talked about it, the importance of a power play amongst these two groups. Who's the difference maker in the gold medal game? So the face off to the right of Dave Van. United States to the power play. Back to back chances here with the extra attacker. They win. Finding Kirsten Sims. Young guns getting some time here on the power play. Bilka taking a look. 
Drops down low. Bilka back up high for win. Bailey win. Working it near side with Bilka. Christensen's calling for it. Win looks to shoot. Heisey with the rebound. And Bilka denied. And Renee Davies stretching out wide. And she can't believe it. They got the exact look that they wanted against a PK that's 100% so far in the tournament in that 1-3-1 one, one set. And you can see them pumping it back to the high ice with a double stack screen. It comes out to Heisey stick once. And Bilka's got it. And Renee Davies is down after making that first save. And she takes it away as Bilka can't elevate that puck. She's exactly where she wants to be with that forehand facing the inside of the ice. Comes to her, just can't elevate. Bilka had two power play goals at last year's tournament. She is looking for her first goal here in 2024. In control, Bilka back for win. Off the stick of Or Stacey, and now we're not a fast. Caught up momentum. Canada, shorthanded, heading the other way. Fast, looking for Stacey. And she can't pull it back in time as Aaron Frankel challenges and a melee in her crease. Canada still looking for their first power play and you can see that the PK is very active as they have active stick Renata Fast is able to throw the puck to the net it comes back out Laura Stacey is in on the hunt in all alone she's reaching for it and look at how aggressive Erin Frankel is without her stick just sprawling as she poke checks and a very athletic save as she is able to hold on and now an offensive zone face off so a couple hundred feet from Canada's end to kill some time off this PK who has earned a starting goal here with the United States led them to gold last year in her first ever gold medal game. Standing tall here in preliminary action. Alex Carpenter going end to end. USA on the power play. Carpenter steered aside by Bell. Turnover. Emily Clark will flip it to center. Well, Alex Carpenter ran out of room there. She was swarmed. Anytime you're in and around the goal line, you can expect some pressure. Harvey. Snapping it for Tessa Janicki. Now oh, through center. Oh, Janicki oh, weighing oh, her oh, options. Oh, She'll oh, take it to the far side. Through traffic, Janicki holds on. Shelton hitting her up against the board. Hillary Knight has to come in for help. And 30 seconds to go on USA's power play. Caroline Harvey to Janicki. A one time shot blocker saved by Davian. A quick release. For the United States, a quick pass and an even faster shot. Well, Amrinade again also recognizing and anticipating where that puck is going, right? You've got to be thinking one step ahead as a goaltender to be able to push across your crease and, and defend a shot like Janicki's. Delton looking for Malton on the near side boards. Back to five on five. Two shots land for the United States on their second power play of the game. Still 0 0 in Utica. Well, and they came in three for 11. Canada, one for eight, still looking for their first. Another shot, hitting a few bodies in front. Blair Turbo will pick it up in the corner. Shelton now on the near side. That's Kelly Panic, not far behind, so she'll turn back. Skimora out in front, no one's home, so the Rock will pick it up. Panic looking to keep this puck in Canada's zone. Sustained pressure coming off the power play now against Canada. Harmon, a long shot, just missing. That will go the distance. Keller, Armington, Michigan, feeding it to Lacey Eden. She'll spin back, trying to outwork Borbonet. Poulin steps in for help. Jenner looking to get open. Poulin, cross ice pass, looking for Malte. Gilde jumps up and sends it back. Let's go field, will have to retreat, stay on side. Now Fillier. Point Schofield. Going to flip it into the near side. Yes. Jamie Borbonet will feed it right back. Win now. The pressure will hit the fans. So a souvenir for the fans here in Utica. 7.58 to go in second. And what has just been electric night in their final preliminary game here. any choice at all everyone has a choice and every choice has a consequence which do you choose life's full of tough choices and how do you choose
When I moved from Iceland, I found the yogurts to be too sweet and artificial tasting. So I created my own. Sikis, on average, 35% less sugar and 75% more protein than leading yogurts. At Burger King, stretch your dollar into an $8 meal so you can stretch lunch into lunch. Get an extra long cheeseburger or original chicken sandwich plus fries and a drink, all for just eight bucks. Well, earlier today, the solar wow. eclipse happened in Utica, New York, a front row seat to an extraordinary event that is colliding on one forgettable day. Let's have ourselves a total eclipse of the heart today, ladies. <laughs> and a great opening line from referee Sean Aniri. But it was so dark, the stadium lights turned on this afternoon outside. Great way to tee up in what has been an excellent game between Canada and the United States. Two on two battle to the right of Debian. Who land right in the middle of this. Murphy is seeing if she can push it ahead as it breaks free. LaRock now heading up ice through center. Canada looking to get some offense from their defense. Jenner looking cross ice. Poulain now on the half board. Let's the shot go. Jenner looking for the rebound and Taylor Heisey picks up the loose puck. Heisey with speed through center. Takes it to the outside, drops it back. Bilka will head net front as high as he tries to get by Kristen O'Neill. Rock now. Trying to get through Dacne. Trying to get through the skates of Bilka. Gets turned back to the corner. That's a great close by Kelly Panic, just leading with her stick. Eden with the lane, ups for the pass. Keller looking to regain control. Eden punching the puck ahead, looking for Britta Curl. Yeah. Well now, finding Eden. They'll send it deep to the zone. The Rock will feed it off the glass and out as USA looks to hold the blue line. And well, that's a real effective shift for her for Panic. And, and Lacey Eden and, and Britta Curl just being above the puck, working hard off of it. And with some sustained pressure. Curl, Eden, a few Badgers. Working hard out here for the United States. Harmon, near side. Shelton now will flip it up off the glass, finding Spooner. Natalie Spooner at center. Trying to get by Tessa Janicki. She'll drop it back for Nurse. Malte on the far side. Toe saved by Frankel. Canada looking for these backdoor passes. Malte with a few chances here early in the night. And I like the fact that, that she took it on her backhand. She was getting a little bit wide. She received it, and she didn't pull it to her forehand. But some quick feet of Frankel. Sarah Nurse, a high shot robbed by Aaron Frankel, keeping things all tied up at zero. The greatest rivalry in sport here in Utica, New York, as we await our opening goal. Join the fans of Canada's game across the country and around the world and be a Hockey Canada insider. Receive news and features about Team Canada, events, promotions, and much more. Sign up at HockeyCanada.ca slash insider. Why aren't there any girls playing? I don't I can taste the changer. At Domino's, mix and match any two or more pizzas and sides for just $8.99 each. Like when pizza night's more like pizza and lava cakes night. Or pasta and stuffed cheesy bread night. Or we're gonna need a bigger table night. Mix and match Canada's favorite pizza and more at Domino's. Well, Anne Renee Debian has made 17 of 17 saves so far. It's set to be dialed in, in particular on the PK, but I just like the way that she's seeing the puck and she's holding on to it. You can see the attention to detail, how she's finding it sliding across, but how she's anticipating as well. When you've got players like Knight and Abby Murphy on the doorstep and in and around the crease, you got to pounce on it and fast. I think for a lot of these players, they're playing high caliber 
intense hockey consistently since January with the launch of the PWHL and Renee Davey, a mainstay for PWHL Montreal, and Julie alongside her between the pipes. And I like think attributing to why we're seeing some of the best hockey out here tonight. As Hillary Knight finds the centering pass for Alex Corker, she gets squeezed out between the two defenders and is slow to get up. Jenner looking to head back the other way as Carpenter is slow to get to the bench. Canada on the attack. Poulin turns back. Adeline with Kenna Point Schofield. Now to center. With some time. Heisey finding Knight. Point Schofield looking for an option off the inner skate of Heisey and out of the hands of Canada. Jenner the other way. Has Turnbull with her. Cuts to center. Kicks it out wide for Turnbull. Let's the wrist shot go off the shoulder of Frankel. As Aaron Frankel and Anne Renee Debian continue to exchange outstanding stops here in the second. Well, Carpenter is going to get hit by Renata Fass. Renata Fass coming back through the middle of the ice. She's in the offensive zone and just closes quickly. And you can see Alex Carpenter drops to the ice. And then again, Turnbull gets that dish onto the outside. As you can see, Jenner coming down the mid lane and Aaron Frankel makes the save. Off the face off, Laura Stacey through center. Get by Caroline Harvey, lets the shot go, loose in front. USA will play it to the corner. You can see that shot's almost a dead angle coming towards Aaron Frankel, seeing if they can catch her cheating off her post. Girl pressuring Blair Turnbull, she tries to feed it off the glass. Stacey setting it deep into the zone. Harvey distributes, panic now on the near side. Skimmera flips it deep in the zone. Shelton looking up ice now for Canada. Van Harmon. And on playing the U18 Women's World, started the USA National Program after college. Nicole Gosling. Our side looking for Natalie Spooner. Now in control, two on one for Canada. Spooner lets it go. Trickles up high. Monte looks to recover it. That was a right-handed shot. I was thinking that Natalie Spooner was definitely going to shoot that puck. She also had a full head of steam up so she could get the most on that shot. An excellent chance for Canada. We still await our first goal. As the second period starts to wind down, under three and a half remaining in the second frame, Gilday now taking a look. Ayla Edwards staying on side. Let's the wrist shot go. Off the back four, Taylor Lynn jumps in. Rattray headed back the other way. Jamie Lee Rattray picking up speed. All the low, Rattray through traffic. Last the wrist shot, but it just heads over the net. Edwards trying to find Kristen Sims. Now Sims all alone the other way. Up against Bourbonnet, cuts to center. It's taken down in the process. Well, as a right hand stick, that was a really nice play by Sims to get to the middle of the ice. Bourbonnet denies the middle of it. And Canada's gonna have their first power play as Kirsten Sims disagrees with the call. Kirsten Sims comes over the blue line and, and she recognizes Team that USA she has a little bit of ice to the remote. middle of the ice, but once it gets taken away, she comes in behind and gets a stick up under the arms of Jamie Lee Rattray. Jamie Lee Rattray, right, drawing a penalty, limited ice. You can see one on three as they're converging on her. The puck is right there. Jamie Lee Rattray is going to get to it first, and Sims doesn't move her feet, but moves her stick, so she gets the call. Canada's power play going to work here against the United States. One for eight, the little power play goal coming back in their first game, Ella Shelton. Scoring that goal against Finland. I mean, those Nomura and Kelly Panic out there who's heavily throughout the tournament and so forth. Switzerland earlier today and upset Germany beat Sweden. We can finish first in Group B. Ambrose heads back on the back track. Haley Skimura looking to beat her there. Canada on the power play. Close out this second period. Spooner to Fillier. Can't get by Britta Curl. She gives her an extra shove. Ambrose weighing her options. Skates through center, gets the red line, and feeds it deep. Frankel will pick it up in behind, giving time for Megan Keller. Yeah, 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 yeah. Enan fires 
brings it all the way down, and USA will go for a change. Ellis Shelton, quarterbacking the second unit now for Team Canada. It's caught off by Counterpoints Goldfield. The attack continues as a long shot fires from Brian Jenner down the right side. Ashton Bell to Shelton. Let's the shot go. Gets blocked by Harvey. And that will get flipped in play, which is good. As it could have been a delay of in call. Jenner down for Sir Daphne. Canada looking to win this board battle under 30 seconds to go on their power play. Zerdakny, right out for Gilday, back to the point for Shelton. She'll walk the blue line, Ellis Shelton pulls it. Zerdakny, top of the circles, looking back door. As Jocelyn the Rock inching closer towards Aaron Franklin. Zerdakny, Jenner calls for it, she receives, back for Zerdakny. Looking to walk out in front, the puck's loose. Jenner looks to jump on it, Skimara beats her there. And the officials have pointed and will grab Haley Skimora here as it will be a delay of game call. So four seconds here, a five on three. Well, and this was really hard work by Skimora. I mean, she's one of their most effective penalty killers, and she'd won the battle for inside position to be able to clear the puck and wanted to get it off quickly. You can see Brianne Jenner kind of pushing, leaning, and look at the shield, but the puck is on edge, and anytime the puck is on edge, it elevates extremely quick, and that's exactly what happened to Canada. The five on three for a four seconds here, so by the time the player gets back in, Call it seven or eight, so they need to find a way to win this draw. And so Sarah Nurse will take the draw for Team Canada on this five on three. Spooner back for Ambrose. Villiers with the lane. Off her pass to Ambrose, but that calls for it. Ambrose shoots. As out comes him, she'll head to the bench. Power play continues for Canada. Barnes beating Spooner. Nurse steps in for help. Jenner engages. Puck floats back to Poulet. Here comes Poulet, lets the wrist shot go. Blocked by Keller, who's favoring her right hand. Final few seconds of the second period. Villiers looking for an extra shot. Hitting a body in front, and that will get steered to the corner. And time will expire through 40 minutes of play. We are still waiting for our first goal of the night between Canada and the United States. Canada's power play will roll over to start this third period. They'll have a minute and 21 seconds with the extra attacker. A nail brighter here in Utica, New York, between Canada and the United States to close out their preliminary play. More to come with our panel in the second intermission. Tessa Bena, Megan Bozak, and Sammy Joe Small will have you covered. It's the 2024 Women's World Hockey Championship. Hockey fans, get your Hockey Canada gear at shop.hockeycanada.ca the official online store of Hockey Canada and the largest selection of Hockey Canada gear anywhere. Get jerseys, men's and women's tees, hoodies, headwear, and more. Don't miss out. Shop now and get today's special offer. Shop.HockeyCanada.ca, a fanatics experience. If you think EVs have about as much personality as a toaster, we don't blame you. That's why we didn't make just any EVs. We made an EV so powerful, it can charge another EV. And an EV with a mode that does this. The only EV that's a Mustang. The only EV that's an F-150. Subway Cyber Sub Days are here, so we baked up a fresh deal. Buy one foot-long sub online or in the app, get one free. Yeah, that's right, free.
beside you, loving hockey. Through the highs, the lows, and everything in between. The game's come a long way, and together we can take it further. No score through 40 minutes of play between Canada and the United States here in Utica, New York at the Women's World. Standing by with Julia Tesheri is Ella Shelton. Ella, you've played in a lot of these Canada-USA games by now. I've seen a lot of them. That's about as intense as I've seen. Could you talk to me just about what it feels like out there right now? Yeah, it's always exciting to play against the U.S. I think we know we're going to get out of them a fast and physical game and just matching that and coming out with something different and hopefully separating us from our competition. Do you think the PWHL has raised the intensity in this game? Oh, for sure. I think we all get that opportunity to play a fast and physical game in our pro league as well. So kind of translates to this game as well. One period left. What's going to be the difference here? Yeah, I think it's, um, you know, keeping pucks deep and getting our opportunities towards the net. I think with our shooting mentality and getting pucks in front there, our forwards do a really good job at tipping and being an option down low. So just continuing to create more options for us in the offensive zone. Thank you. Good luck in the third. Thank you so much. So welcome you into our second intermission. Tessa Bena, Megan Bozak, Sammy Joe Small along with you. So. Another entertaining period in the books. This one felt a little bit different than the first. I felt like I could catch my breath in between whistles with this one. Nonetheless, both teams getting some chances on the power play. Megan, how did you like the American setup? I like the setup, and I think Caroline Harvey will be a difference maker for the U.S. on the power play. Her deceptive shot from the blue line, but they didn't showcase much with the two power plays that they had. Layla Edwards draws a penalty, but Canada kept the U.S. on the perimeter for most of it. But Caroline Harvey with a shot that Jocelyn Rock blocks at the start, which is sometimes a bit dangerous because you don't know where that shot will go. And Ella Shelton has a big block on Hillary Knight, but I think they learned last year that they can't give Hillary Knight too much time and space. But on the flip side, we're not a fast with a great connection to Laura Stacey, who just misses it shorthanded. Special teams are going to be a difference maker in this game, and this is a time where it usually gets you up out of your seat to, to see teams on power plays killing off penalties. We've seen a lot of that, now they just need a goal. And we didn't think that it would be shorthanded that Canada would get more chances, but I mean, specialty teams, right? That's just it. It's still a part of it. John Robleski, head coach of Team USA, said right off the bat, very often in these games, specialty teams are what make the difference. So for Canada, what were your thoughts on their power play Sammy they're obviously starting a third on one as well they certainly are and they have a chance to redeem themselves because yeah. it has not looked good all period they're only one for nine in the entire tournament they're on their 10th power play so they could get a goal here however they're only 11 percent so far in this tournament and it's just not clicking a lot of bouncing pucks the tape to tape passes just not hitting they're not recovering pucks well they got to play to their strengths they got to keep it simple they need to get inside on the Americans and they need to get that first pass on their tape Poulet needs to shoot the puck they need to get big people in front of the net play to your strength do what you do very well and they'll be successful and I think both teams are taking away the power forwards that usually shoot from the outside so Poulin didn't have much much time or space with the puck so the US is doing a good job on their PK and on the other side they're not giving Hillary Knight much much time to take her shot as well and this comes down to coaching right who can recover and who can change and who can have a better strategy next time yeah and it's a matter of the team adapting as well and implementing those changes properly and effectively. We talked about Anne Debian in the first period, Sammy, as she was incredibly busy. Felt like this period as well, all the action just keeps happening in front of us here. Aaron Frankel busy in that period as well. Well, Frankel didn't see much action in the first period, but she was certainly up to task in the second. And, you know, uh, Anne Rene Debian had such an incredible first period. It's hard sometimes when you don't get as many shots, but Frankel was just on point and so focused on in that second period and it, she's just so feisty. She's so aggressive. I love her athleticism and that's really what makes her such a strong goaltender. This really has turned into a goalie duel out there and Frankel has been up to the task. She, her play is a direct result of her being so unpredictable as a goaltender. The Canadian offense just can't figure her out. I mean, sh shots are going high, shots are going low, and when you say unpredictable as a goaltender, just go, what do you mean by that? So she doesn't do what you're supposed to do. She's not as ah, technical as athletic. other go goalies can be. And she just watches it. She just reacts to it, almost like a soccer goalie does. Right. And that's hard to shoot against. And she looks so 
athletic out there. She's making these saves left, right, and center. But that helps the U.S. defensemen. The U.S. relies heavily on their defense to be offensive. And her massive saves also get the crowd into it, too, right? You can just hear them so loud. There's a group right behind us that every time there's like three dudes standing up, just like, God, they're chirping the Canadians as they're going by, like, you can't beat her. And she's just like kind of skating by, giving the guys a nod. So it's nice to see the fans support and the players having some fun with it, too, out there. All right, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll take a look at what went on around the rest of the women's world on day six here in Utica, New York. Canada still looking for their first goal. We'll start the third on the power. I can't believe this place is ours. Should we go with Sunset Marigold or Bright-Eyed Susan? Oh, you are the paint specialist. Huh. I'm better at sorting out our mortgage, which was super easy with RBC. Super easy. They paired us with our own mortgage specialist who give us helpful advice and our best rate. Another good idea. Boom. Does RBC need a paint specialist? Maybe. I can work with maybe. Get up to $4,600 in cash and Avion points. The Chevy Silverado. With available Super Cruise connected by OnStar, only Super Cruise lets you drive hands free and tow hands free. It'll help you get to the adventure energized, and it'll help drive you home. It's your mattress. It's impacting your sleep. Stop playing the blame game. Speak to a sleep expert because at Sleep Country, we solve sleep. The time to switch event is on now. When you have two days to paint four stories, do it quicker. When your cat uses the wall as a nail file, do it better. And when colors scream from every direction, do it smarter. Do it with Dulux. Spring into savings at the Spring into Action Sale on now at Home Hardware. Save 25% on Beauty Tone Pure Interior Paint and up to 25% on select miracle Grow products. Only at Home Hardware and Building Centers. Here's how. Shocking finishes and everything in between. NCAA March Madness concludes tonight with the Men's National Championship. 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. See it all go down right here on TSN. I will say, though, this game has been a ton of fun. So, your choice. We won't judge you for it. All right, here's what took place earlier today. Group B action. Germany, Sweden. First period scoreless. Eva Hedfuss. Back door to Thea jo Johansson. She's robbed by Sandra Abstrider with the sprawling pad save. One of Abstrider's 32 in this one. No score through one. The aggression picking up in the second here. Both sides combining for eight penalties. The winner of this one, by the way, will lock up top spot in Group B. So that's why they're so feisty. We remain scoreless after two periods. Eight minutes into the third here. Still tied. Germany pressing. Tabia Botov. Fires from the point, deflects off a shin pad of Franziska Feldmeier, and it goes in. Germans open the scoring, and they win this one, one to nothing. So Germany sitting atop Group B, even though they have the same amount of points as Sweden, they obviously get first place due to that win. China currently sitting in third place with three points. Denmark earning to themselves. Japan sitting at the bottom there, still looking for their first win at this tournament. Zero is on the scoreboard between Canada and USA through two periods of play here. It has been entertaining, to say the least, with more in the first two periods. Let's get to Kenzie and Cheryl. 
Well, as the game gone on, we started to see special teams, and Canada's penalty kill continues to reign perfect, Cheryl. Well, yeah, I mean, you have to close quickly with your stick, and I thought they were really effective, only giving up two shots in those two opportunities. And listen, if you close quickly and you block shots and you take away the middle of the ice, good things will happen, especially when you got the likes of Anne Renee Debian in net. But it's knowing exactly how to use that stick. You see Jocelyn LaRock, but then you've got Emma Malte picking up the player on that weak side. So everything is about communicating. It's recognizing when you pressure, when you can anticipate, and when you have to hold back. I thought they did an excellent job of making sure that they got in the shooting lanes and then attacking, killing some valuable seconds in and on the rush, finding ways to create some turnovers in the neutral ice. And look at this spin off by Renata Fast. Listen, recognize, listen, I may not score from here, but now all of a sudden we're killing some valuable time. And that's exactly what you have to do on a PK. You got to allow your goaltender to make the save from the outside. And when you have an opportunity to pressure, you go for it. Well, 2022, the gold medal game in Denmark was the last time Canada and the United States were scoreless in two periods. Tessa? Thank you, ladies. These fans are into it. We've got lighters. Well, they're not lighters. They're telephone lights going on in the rink. Everyone's bop, bop, buying. We got third period puck drop coming up next. Here's to those who ask how. Like Kevin, who asked Janine from Home Hardware how to build a place to work. Or not work. Or Siobhan, who took Josh's advice and created a front yard worthy of this TV commercial. Or Eric and Sasha, who asked Julie how to reimagine their backyard so they could be more outdoorsy. Complete your next project with helpful advice from thousands of store owners and team members across Canada. Home Hardware and Building Centers. Here's how. Julie's having eggs for dinner. They're quick, they're delicious. There's nothing stopping her. Not even her husband's model train club. Eggs for dinner, what's stopping you? Power through your to-do list. and create a space that makes a splash. Find steel tools starting at $179.99. Shop local, buy steel. Find yours at steel.ca. At Domino's, mix and match any two or more pizzas and sides for just $8.99 each. Like when pizza night's more like pizza and lava cakes night, or pasta and stuffed cheesy bread night, or we're gonna need a bigger table night. Mix and match Canada's favorite pizza and more at Domino's. Whether you're learning to skate or playing under the brightest lights in the game, hockey leaves its mark on everyone who participates. We believe that Canada's game belongs to all Canadians. But in order to be her, she must first see her. That's why we're dedicated to supporting girls and women on the ice and behind the bench. Girls who enjoy the benefits of hockey grow into strong and empowered women. Girls grow when they play hockey, and hockey grows when girls play. Because hockey is hers. The two most important days in your life are the day you are born and the day you find out why. Yeah, Trick, I said what I said. I don't care, I paint the town red. If you can survive this, it's going to make the whole story that much better. The bright horses are broken, free from the fear. through two periods of play between Canada and USA here at the Women's Worlds. The Canadians out shooting the Americans 11 to 6 in this one. They will start the third period with a minute 21 on the power play. Puck drop. Kenzie, Cheryl, over to you. Well, look, this afternoon, the Eclipse may have sold the show up above, but down on the ice. Team Canada and the United States are lighting up this rink with their rivalry. We still need a goal here in Utica. And Canada with an excellent opportunity here to begin this third period on the power play. Well said, Amanda. Most goals win. And Canada looking for a chance on this power play. 
Canada out shooting the Americans 11 to 6 in that second frame. Maybe a correlation. They were 69% in the dot. Nurse looking for a pass as she gets pushed off by Keller. Those two collide in the corner. Ambrose will have to retreat to pick up the puck. Megan Keller played the most for the Americans, 13-41. And The Rock, 16-23. For hand and Kevin Coyne Schofield with a chance at center. It's just the second time this tournament. We've been scoreless in two periods. It happened earlier today between Sweden and Germany. It was decided by just one goal. Shelton pulls it back deep into Canada's zone. As Canada's alone power play goal this tournament. Shelton taking a look. Pressured by Curl. Feeds it to the near side. Eden's there. She'll feed her right back down. Gilday trying to cut the ice in half. Well, that's a great shift by Lacey Eden. Now out in front, Stacey looking to beat Frankel. Gilday. Laura Stacey trying to, to put the, the puck in the feet of Aaron Frankel. Now on the far side, the crowd is getting into this set. Out comes Haley Skimmer. Stacy sending it deep into the zone, looking for Turnbull. Gilly holding up the line. Back to five on five. Hillary Knight looking for Alex Carpenter. Here comes Carpenter. One on three all alone. Her shot gets blocked by LaRock. Sooner looking up ice to center. Emma Malte picking up speed. She has Nurse with her. Malte cuts back. Feeds it deep in the zone to connect with Sarah Nurse. Now Spooner trying to get by Shelton as she heads back on the back check. The top line for the United States going to work here. They have time for eight of their 15 goals. Kevin Coyne Schofield, Hillary Knight, and Alex Carpenter. And here comes Coyne Schofield. On the outside, drops it back. When we talk about the speed and youth of this line and how quick and effective they can be, especially when they play off the rush and they attack in layers. Look at the eyes on Kendall Coyne Schofield up into the higher ice, but because of the depth to the attack, you can see Heisey dishing it back door. Driving that weak post is Abby Murphy. Yes, it's a beautiful feathered pass. And she's able to get some wood on it, but Anne Renee Debian reads it perfectly. Coyne Schofield coming off her first multi-point game at the world. In 2017, when the USA hosted last time in Plymouth, it was Hillary Knight that scored that game winner in overtime. And Kevin Coyne Schofield picked up the assist. A two on one unfolding for the United States. Heisey, Harvey, too high for Caroline Harvey. A great A chance for the young defender. Now in control, looking for Hannah Bilka this time, net front. What a sequence for the United States. A two on one, Caroline Harvey. Well, and as Taylor Heisey, right, with a little bit of a fake, making sure that she can draw Debian to her so that when she delivers that pass, she knows that Carolyn Harvey has some mesh to hit. Rattray the other way, feeding it deep in the corner. Danielle Sardakny turning up speed. Lucian O'Neill on the far side, back down for Sardakny. Taking a look, trying to feed Rattray, stole away by Edwards. Layla Edwards gets the red line, looks for the chip and chase. Fast, with better positioning, sending it deep in the corner for Laurent. Sir Dagny on the half boards, now up ice, looking for extra pass for Rattray. Icing will be the call, so we'll head back to Canada's territory. Well, back-to-back -back chances for the Americans. One more of a triple drive off of the rush, and this one a two-on-one out of the scrum, and you can see Heisey with the fake, and she still stalls, 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 because she wants to make sure she can draw Debian to her and make sure she holds square to her, and then she delivers that pass. That is an open net. Harvey had a little bit more time than she thought to be able to corral that puck and put it in, but it goes over the bar. The United States has put up 97 goals against Canada in the history of the world. They look for a pass out in front, a long shot by Gilly gets blocked, so Dagny picks it up. She'll flip that to neutral ice. Wynn pulls it back. You see Jamie Lee Rattray being inserted throughout the lineup here right now in place of Julia Gosling alongside Kristen O'Neill and Danielle Serdakny. We've even seen Serdakny elevated to play alongside Poulin and Jenner. We'll see if that trio may become a line as the tournament progresses. Keller now finding Harmon, fresh on the ice for USA. Harmon 
Through traffic, looking for the loose puck. Keller pulls it back. Snaps it for Herman to center. Savannah Harmon lets the high shot go. Getting a few bodies in front. That's a nice little play by Renata Foss as well. And she just hits a three-foot pass on Jamie Lee Rabtray's stick, who puts it to safety in the neutral zone. Keller to Eden. In her feet, she has control. To Eden with a nice pass for herself. It's pushed off by Blair Turnbull as she has control at center. Blair Turnbull picking up speed. Out by Clark with a pass. DC can't let the shot go. Another great sit by Kelly Panic, just recognizing who to take and who's the greatest threat. Turnbull looking for a passing option. It's Frankel on net. United States out shooting Canada here at 19 to 17. Such a close game. The zeros on the board show for it. Going Schofield to Carpenter off the stick. Malte watching on. Hillary Knight out in front for Kendall Coin Schofield on the doorstep. And that's all about positioning by Kendall Coin Schofield, knowing how to manipulate her body to gain that inside position to be available for that pass. It was tight space, but she got her stick on it. USA getting closer here in this third period. Looking to break through on the scoreboard as Hillary Knight tries to pull this puck out. Back in the corner, Carpenter on net. Davian will get the hold. Wow, this has been so entertaining and back and forth action. You can see Kendall Coase scoring Schofield net front. And look at this play. She's down at the goal line. And Kendall Coyne Schofield just makes sure she gains position on Jamie Bourbonnet net front. Bourbonnet's aware she takes away the passing lane with her backhand. But look at the ability of that small, strong body and Kendall Coyne Schofield to get available. I mean, so tenacious in and around the net. Canada face off deep in their zone. Poulin looking to chip it ahead. Kick of the zone by Wynn. Rolls to the near side. Renata Fass looks to pick it up. Natalie Hart against Bilka. The puck popped loose. Lorock will pick it up. Ross Lorock feeding to center. Wynn jumps up and sends it right back down. Uh, and, and Poulin and Villiers have been quiet so far in this game. So interesting. Just haven't felt like they've had the puck enough to be able to do something with it. But you certainly know with the likes of Poulin, she certainly strikes at the right time in these kind of games. Well, you look at the point production we've seen by Canada in this tournament so far. It's coming down the lineup. Malte with two goals. Kristen O'Neill with two. Julia Gosling on the board as well. Players stepping up, up and down Canada's lineup. Face off to the right of Davian. Sims back for Keller. Beating it deep to the zone. Lila Edwards jumps on the loose puck. Edwards taking a look. She'll hold for a better option. Fast jumps up on the loose puck. Edwards wants to head back to pick up her stick. Now Canada with numbers. Jenner to center. Let's the shot go. Fast looking for the rebound. It floats to the corner. Long shot from the point. Rachel plays it to the corner. Megan Keller through traffic. Canada outnumbering Poulin. Back. Long shot. Puck's loose. Edwards will pick it up. That's a nice steer by Laura Stacy, and the reason why Ella Sheldon can jump through the middle of the ice and create that turnover. Offside will be the call. It's been an exciting night in Utica, New York Championship Village, the place to be at the Women's World. <laughs>
She had 33 goals at Minnesota and 29 assists and 118 penalty minutes. So <laughs> you certainly know that she she plays with an edge and she loves to get it under her opponent's skin. There's not too many players that lead in those categories. Ivy Murphy, a very special player here. He's battling behind it in. Of course, Stacey looks to jump on the loose puck, where the jumps back to her feet. I remember talking to John Robleski a few years ago and just, you know, having to toe the line and, and making your mark at the right time. And, you know, as an athlete learns that and matures, it can be such a dangerous and lethal thing. Battle at center. Harvey looks to send in deep into the zone. She'll go for a change. Giving time for fast, but not enough. Carpenter right there. Now Jocelyn the rock. Through traffic, feeds it ahead for Gosling. She'll get the red line. Now deep in USA zone. Taken down, no call on the plank. Hellpoint Schofield looking to head back the other way. Carpenter feeds it off for fast. Off the near side boards, Kristen O'Neill looking to chip the key. And Schofield backs it down. Bill Day doing the same. Now Canada. Julia Gosling takes a spill. Let's the shot go to the far side. Perfect timing. She'll pick it up in behind. Looking to make a play on Puck will get cleared up high. Hillary Knight on the loose puck. Feeding it for points. Go field through a few legs. Gives time for Ashton Bell. Corbinet yeah. for Malte. Back to center. Bell engages. Looking to meet Taylor Heisey. Bell, it's a shot go. Gets blocked by Gilday. Abby Murphy. Looking to beat Natalie Spooner as the two collide. And that is challenging to take down Natalie Spooner. Turnover chance for Spooner. Drops it back for Malte. Canada getting some chances here in the offensive zone. Spooner on net. Franco will hold as she flashes the leather with 11-12 remaining in this third period. Well, Natalie Spooner trying to take it to the net and going in hard. And the, the first collision is going to be against Abby Murphy. And she slows up and Abby Murphy doesn't. But she gets up trying to get to the net. She's able to disrupt the puck again as she gets above the puck. And she's able to get it. She tries to go behind her back to Emma Malte. And then they're trying to work the cycle as she comes back up through off of the wall. And she puts it to the net and she gets taken down by Gilday. Off the face off. Scora. Looking for Edwards. Tessa Janicki on the outside. Janicki spins back. Off the skate of Shelton. She'll collide with Skibora. Uh, and that's a nice one-on-one -on -one battle with Shelton. Just trying to steer to the outside. That's exactly what she did. That's where she wanted her. And she was able to guide her. As a defender, you always want to dictate where your opponent goes. Keller. Signing Skibora. Edwards at center, Layla Edwards looking for an option. She'll feed it deep into the zone and go for a change. Can she ever shield the puck or what? She's got that <laughs> large frame over six feet, so she's able to, to really use her stick and her body to her advantage. Blair Turnbull against the blue line, sitting it deep into the zone. That's a smart play by Kayla Barnes just to stand up one on one, but she knew she couldn't interfere, so she had to let her go, let her partner come in. Vilka the other way. She's getting closer and closer every game. Hannah Bilka is scoring a goal here. Will it be the difference maker tonight? Well, I've really liked her game. I mean, she's four goals, three assists at the Brampton World Championship, but she's been in around the net. Out of front, Kristen O'Neill with a chance in the slot. Bilka, dynamic forward, another player that can really play up and down the lineup. Oh, yeah, and I've certainly liked her when she's been below the goal line. And we will see what happens when we come back under 10 to go in the third period. My window's like a mirrored reflection. I have to steer you in the right direction. Every trip, you can depend on ESSO to be the place between places, connecting you to what's next. Welcome to Lobster Fest. Is your party ready? Ready to tangle with tails on tails on tails? Try Lobster Lover's Dream while you can. It's one of eight next level lobster creations. Lobster Fest is ending soon, so hurry in. Every cup of Tim's coffee tells a story. We select high-quality, responsibly sourced beans and blend them using the same recipe and level of care since 1964. It's Canada's favourite coffee for a reason. Tim's for good. Learn more at timhortons.ca.
Well, Renata Fast plays a ton of minutes on the back end, and they're hard, they're heavy minutes because she will steer. She uses her body. Listen, there's no question she competes for every single puck. She manipulates the blue line, opening up lanes. But I really like not only how she transitions, but how she just goes for it, right? She uses their frame, she uses her body, and listen, she can get there because of her skating. I think she's one of the best skaters, if not the best skater in the world. And through the Clarkson Golden Knights program, you think we've seen generations now, her and Aaron Ambrose winning a championship together. Now we see Haley Wynn and Nicole Gosling, current skaters with, with Clarkson. And well, here they are with their respective countries competing on the international stage, chasing gold. Well, and you have to be very well conditioned, right? If you want to play the amount of minutes that she actually plays and the way that she plays them. And I think that the PWHL and all these athletes playing all of the time, getting themselves game ready is certainly help with the pace of play. Absolutely. As Gilday looks to feed it up for Britta Curl. The college players are also coming off a busy schedule themselves. USA went into an evaluation camp right after to gear up for the Worlds. Selected their team that way, where Team Canada just announced their roster. Through her at the backhand shot, just high. Two different approaches to this year's championship. We'll see which one pays off as Keller pulls it back. Just outwork. Natalie Spooner at center. Alex Carpenter gloves it down. Looking for Hillary Knight. Taken down by Emily Clark. Wayne Schofield pops back up. We're taking a hit from LaRock and the puck's to center. LaRock feeding Spooner. Trying to find Blair Turnbull on a stride. Well, Megan Keller could have went to Savannah Harmon. A real nice connected play. Just popped it back up the same side instead of hitting her partner. A lot of neutral zone play. Orbanay pulls it back. Taking a look. Larry Knight will go for a change. Under eight and a half remaining in the third period. We are still awaiting our first goal of the night between Canada and the United States. Franco off the near side. Caroline Harvey flips it ahead. With speed, Abby Murphy straight off the bench. Deep in Canada zone. Murphy caught up looking for Bilka as an option. Ashton Bell and Bilka battling hard. Bilka looking for Harvey as she tried to find a quiet space in behind Canada's defenders. Oh, she's sneaky, isn't she? And, but she can shrink the zone and then all of a sudden wind up in back in position. Barnes scanning in front. Bilka can't get the shot off. An excellent feed by Gayla Barnes. Izzy now out in front. Boulan punches it ahead. Harvey with a shot off the body of Corbinet. Blocked shots has been the storyline here in the third period. Boulan now trying to get by Harvey. She'll flip it to center. Gosling staying on side, sends it right back into the United States zone. by Christina Neal just to recognize that Aaron Ambrose had pinched down on Layla Edwards. Pops that puck right back into the corner. Edwards to Janicki. Now it's a toss to Janicki with speed. Trying to let the shot go off the backboard. Sim is following it up with pressure. Janicki. A Penn State looking for an option. Edwards will pick it up. Drops it back for Sims. Two Badgers. I mean, it's heading into that championship game now here in Utica. Going to work. Sims and Thurston. O'Neal looking for an option. Icing will be the call. Well, sometimes your veterans just need to be the ones to ex know exactly where the threat is and just a really nice play here. You can see that Bilka is trying to load, settle that puck to load it and Jenna recognizes she's got a moment to take that away and she does. We saw Alex Carpenter do it early and Kelly Panic as well. Some of the veterans recognizing there's not time here so you got to make sure that you're hard on your stick. Jenner had two goals in the gold medal game in Brampton at last year's tournament. She has been a difference maker for Canada. Harmon feeding it deep in the zone. Connects with Carpenter in the United States top line out here. Keller loads a high shot. Off a of body, down the far corner. Carpenter pinned up by Shelton. O'Neill steps in. She'll float that puck to center, and Serdakny will chase. Now a foot race. Serdakny getting an extra step. Those are two tall, fast skaters battling for a puck. Uh, and, and I love the fact just put it to the net, right? Or put it high in the neutral zone when you have no option. Okay, one shot.
The crowd cheering on as Aaron Frankel with a strong stop here in the third period. Battle of goaltending. What a night in Utica. Augustin O'Neill just elevates the puck into the neutral zone and you can see the race for it. And I like this because at the very least you're pushing play back. If you're Canada and Serdakne's in and on the hunt, then Emma Malte, I mean, she takes that puck a little bit wider because she not only wants to draw the defender at Harmony outside the dot, she wants to give Jocelyn LaRock and Renata Fass availability to get open with a quick shot. And then you can see both defenders in looking to pounce on the puck. Point Schofield. Deep into the zone, Debian settles. Orbane up ice to Spooner. At center, Skamora challenges. Kelly Panic taking advantage. Deep into the zone, Debian will come out again. Settles the puck, Orbane skates into it. Crushed on, two Americans challenging Debian Orbane as Debian takes a spill in her crease. Back to her feet, she will go. Skamora in control, lets the shot go off the stick. Now time for Panic. Clutters to the corner, Harvey picks it up off the stick of Debian. Natalie Spooner. Feeding it for Emma Malte. What a stretch play. Malte does land it on net. Now two Ohio State Buckeyes and Emma Malte and one of the toughest athletes to play against, Kayla Barnes, has said that herself. And she just makes sure that she uses the body to take away Malte's ice. Kayla Barnes so effective one-on-one. -on -one. Shelton looking for Clark. Now Turnbull with speed on the outside. A lot of blue in the way. Canada deep in the United States zone. Turnbull lets the shot go. And a save made by Frankel. Pilka and Clark collide. They jump back to their feet. Paul Pilka. A few extra words here for Emily Clark at center. And a big collision here just in front of the penalty box. And Pilka is not pleased. A nail biter here in between Canada and the United States, we still need a goal in this preliminary game. If you think EVs have about as much personality as a toaster, we don't blame you. That's why we didn't make just any EVs. We made an EV so powerful, it can charge another EV. And an EV with a mode that does this. The only EV that's a Mustang. The only EV that's an F-150. stands right in her way so Canada to the power play a huge opportunity for team Canada late in the game to the power play Poulet winds what a shot by Canada's captain Ambrose now along the blue line taking a look lets the shot go now Nurse will pick it up in the corner Canada 0 for 2 in the power play so far in this game as the pump pops loose Keller causing havoc down low Harmon will bring around up high well, it's interesting to know that typically Poulin throughout this tournament has been on her onside. She's now working her offside with Aaron Ambrose at the top. New adjustments for Canada's power play here late in the game. Desperate for a goal. And Curl will just feed it right down into Canada's end. And Eden is going to be aggressive in the crease here, chasing Dave in. Now Shelton. Finding Ashton Bell, picking up speed. Ashton Bell streaming down the right side, turns back. Now Gilday stomping up. Serdaki, deep in Canada's zone, pops it out in front. Bell looking to settle this puck, and Eden will steer it to the boards. And Harvey sending it all the way down. Well, the Americans are doing a phenomenal job of 
of just really being aggressive and recognizing when Canada is isolated and they're attacking in numbers, giving them no time or space to get in and get set up. It was Canada's penalty trouble that got them in deep waters late in the gold medal game, and now the United States on the kill here late in this preliminary game. Punched ahead, Carol Cole-Schofield short-handed for the United States at wide, flips it to center, Hillary Knight, a backhand shot, and Renee Dupier is here to stay, denying the scoring leader at the Worlds. Are you kidding me, Kenzie Lalonde? This is just an unbelievable sequence, starting with Kendall coyne Schofield. Listen, she's a fast player, so it's like she recognizes, I'm not going to take it all the way. Look at the little peak here. Slow it up, slow it up, feather the pass, give Hillary Knight an opportunity to gain position, and you've got one of the greatest goal scorers in the world, one-on-one -on -one with Anne-Renee Debian running out of room, and she makes the save. Off the face-off, Laura Stacy with speed. As this penalty looks to expire, Bilka eager to get out of the box, and we're back to five on five. USA in control, Bilka on the ice. Skimora in the slot, looks to settle the puck. She'll send it deep in the zone. Canada able to land one shot on the power play. Under two to go in this third period. We still need a goal. Wow, a short up handed opportunity for the United States and this crowd is absolutely electric. A beautiful feathered pass by Kendall Coyne Schofield and you can see that Hillary Knight isn't in the middle of the ice and I think that Emrene Debian recognizes this and I can get square to this. She's running out of room but that's a beautiful play all the way around by number 26 for the United States. And coach John Robleski putting out this top line now for the United States looking to close out this third period with a goal. Malte finding her out of fast. She picks up speed. Fast through center. That's the red line setting it deep into the zone. Getting tripped up in the process. She'll head to the bench. Keller now rimming it for points. Schofield. She'll leave it. Giving time for Ambrose to pick up the puck. Aaron Ambrose ahead for Malte. Malte getting the red line back for Ambrose on the back. She'll pick it up. Now down low, Spooner looking for an option, getting closed out by the United States. A puck's loose. Maltese looking for it. Back in the hands of Spooner. Now Nurse. Top of the circle and we'll get a stoppage in play. We'll take a breath, hockey fans. Here we are. 106 to go. And we still need a goal. Well, the pass comes right up and it's going to be Emma Malte. Look at the little peek she takes. She draws two and then she feathers to the middle of the ice, recognizing that Aaron Ambrose the defender was coming through the middle and the little bit of a spinorama comes as Ambrose thinks she sees Spooner available and I'm telling you, ne Sarah Nurse is a right-handed shot. That might be in. Jenner taking the draw here for Canada. Heisey looking to win it back. Final minute to go in this third period. All tied up at zero. Heisey looking for a drop pass. Harvey looking to feed it ahead. Brand Jenner now along the board. Working hard against Harvey. Heisey stepping in for support. Fillier now taking a look. Sarah Fillier looking for an option. Connects it fast. Top the blue liner shot gets blocked by Murphy. Harvey for Kayla Barnes. Stretch pass, finding Taylor Heisey with speed. She'll flip it deep into the zone. With 30 seconds to go in the third. Murphy now on the far side. Herbal steps in for help. Don't bring it around to the near side. Jenner hopes to be Keller. Keller now to the far side. Now out in front. Edwards is sending it on net. Even time for Janicki. Feet in front. Lacey Eden with a great A chance. Jenner flipping it to center in the final seconds in this third period. Well, my goodness, Cheryl Pounder, we need overtime in Utica. Pressure, Layla Edwards, you can see, putting it behind the net. Janicki putting it to the middle of the ice. Lacey Eaton, who's had herself an excellent game, trying to get her stick on it. We are heading to overtime. Well, for the second year in a row, we need extra time for Canada and the United States in this preliminary game. What a night it's been inside Adirondack Bank Center. We'll be right back with overtime between Canada and the United States.
Welcome to an electric car commercial. Wait, that is a Subaru. Where are you taking me? Electric vehicles belong in the city. They are quiet. Pristine. But this is exceptionally capable. This is good, clean fun. The all-electric Subaru Solterra. Happy birthday, big guy. Your old minivan? Your old minivan. It still runs? Like new. And thanks to Fountain Tire's trusted, reliable service, you'll be driving this for a long time. Never getting rid of this, baby. Great. And of course, quality tires. Why is that guy there? Because, honey, wherever you go, Fountain Tire is right there with you. Huh? Do I have to wear the helmet? Absolutely. It's adorable. Fountain Tire. We're on this road together. Frankel has been outstanding in this game as well. 26 saves on the night, not letting one buy her. Just in, in around her feet, she makes the save. She's Look at how aggressive she is. You know she's a shot-first goaltender, but she's really athletic. She's found the puck. She's held on when she's had to. And listen, Canada has found their way net front with the likes of Renata Fass jumping down, Natalie Spooner, but she has stood tall. Listen, she didn't love her game likely against Finland, but she has answered the call. What? A night it has been, and we'll take a look at the overtime rules here at the IHF Women's World. So five minutes of three-on-three, three, sudden death overtime, and if it needed, a five-player shootout. And that is what we needed in Brampton last year, but it wasn't five share. We all went all the way to an 18-player <laughs> shootout. But hitting the net will be critical if it comes to that eight. And the shots miss the net in that shootout. But let's see if overtime will solve this game as the night has just been electric. The crowd outstanding along for the ride. and overtime and here we are in 2024 Harvey on the face off she'll shoot and Davey will make the stop and an extra shove in front as Canada's captain looks on well the physicality continues in this game but right from the opening overtime face off the United States are gonna look to pounce you can see Carolyn Harvey the active defender who loves offense gains the dot and takes that short side shot and then gets a little spice from Jocelyn LaRock you see the quick release she tried to change the angle Carpenter off the faceoff, straight on net. Quinn Schofield looking hard down low, trying to beat Jocelyn LaRook. Puck pops up to the point. Harvey settles, taking a look down for Carpenter. Quinn Schofield starting this cycle. She'll set up high, keeping it in the zone though. Popped ahead for Serdakny. Take some time here in overtime. Alongside two veterans as Jocelyn LaRock looks to feed it to the far boards. Quinn Schofield for Carpenter. A two on one on for the United States. Carpenter to Harvey. against Caroline Harvey now. She'll float to center. Harvey feeding Heisey. Canada's going to go for a change. Out comes Spooner. Taylor Heisey in center. Let's it go. Blocker saved by Davian. Nurse now finding Natalie Spooner. And here she comes. Natalie Spooner end to end against Keller. Turns back. Out comes Fast. Spooner feeding Fast. Not a Fast taking a look. Trying to outwork Taylor Heisey. Looking for a better angle. Fast. Still protecting the puck now. Looking for an option. Spooner with the chance. Her shot gets blocked by Hillary Knight. Now Megan Keller. Three. Hillary Knight will head net front as Megan Keller walks the middle. Natalie Spooner getting her stick in the lane. Under three and a half to go in this overtime. Janicki taking a look. She'll turn back, looking for an option. Keller's going to go for a change. Out comes Kayla Barnes. Janicki spins back. Kayla Barnes now, looking for an angle. She'll pick it up in the corner. Natalie Spooner with speed, trying to beat Abby Murphy. Spooner near the end of her shift. Take it down in the process. She'll go for a change. As Abby Murphy picks up momentum. Murphy through two. 
Trying to get the shot off. It'll hit the stick of Ella Shelton. Stacy connects with Turnbull. There are Turnbull now deep in the United States zone. Five Barnes. Now time for Pilka. Fresh off their championship with the Buckeyes. Barnes and Pilka looking for an option. Target to the ice. Carpenter to help out. And here comes Team USA. Hannah Bilka to Alex Carpenter. Flips it to Hannah Bilka. Now with speed. Hannah Bilka taking a look. She'll go all the way. Sends it up high for Harvey. Trying to get by O'Neal. Now as Carpenter will pick it up. With patience, Carpenter drawing Ashton Bell. And now O'Neal catches Carpenter. against Heisey, connects with Emma Maltais, she'll spin back. Canada looking up ice, Brianne Jenner now on the far side, Jenner looking to get by Sims. Jenner drops the shoulder, ripped up in the process, now the United States, Caroline Harvey on the near side against Canada's captain, Harvey, back, Sims, her shot, she scores! A goal she won't forget, Kirsten Sims, first goal at the Women's World Recognizing that you got coverage, you've got Pulan backing up, and she just goes low and takes that shot. So, Kirsten Sims, the rookie, gets the game winner. Sensational Sims does it tonight in Utica, and John Robleski loves it. Oh my goodness, what a goal for the youngster. Well, you've got your young players, rookies, out on the ice in overtime against Canada for this very reason. He trusts and believes in their skill set, giving them the platform. And hear that crowd. Team USA, first goal scored by nine, Kirsten Sims, assistant number four, what Caroline a Harvey. Night here, and Aaron Frankel will get the win. For Canada, it's defeat. And so they'll finish second in the Group A division. As we await to hear our players of the game tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, the best players of each team will be awarded a trophy from Oneida County, sponsor of the 2024 IIHF Women's World Championship. The prize is tonight to be presented by Alan Hutchins, General Manager, uh, General Sales Manager of Subaru of Utica, and Rich Markowski, Multi-Store General Manager. The best player for Team Canada Number 35, Anne Renee Dabian. Well, Anne Renee Dabian was a difference maker. This game could have gone a lot differently if she was not relied upon so heavily. A great game for the goaltender. The best player for Team USA, number 31, Aaron Franklin. Uh -huh. Fist bumps, and you know it's when he's 
Quick save shutout. This is a well deserved honor. Aaron Frankel keeping the Canadians at bay. Both goaltenders getting their time because both of them shine. Aaron Frankel from New York <laughs> State, your player of the game, and he is <laughs> loving it. You got to give it Kirsten Sim. She has won a game winner before at the college level. And a big goal again, stepping up here on the international stage for the first time. The United States defeating Team Canada in overtime, 1-0. Ladies tonight. and gentlemen, please it's rise time now if you're able for the Star Spangled Banner. The national anthem of the United States of America. <laughs> States with a 1-0 overtime win. The USA chants are raining down. Megan and Sammy will break it down next. You already brush, but dentists recommend adding a water pick water flosser to your routine. Pulsating water cleans deep to remove up to 99.9% .9 of plaque from treated areas. And the 360-degree rotating tip cleans hard to reach places. Trust the number one water flosser brand, Waterpick. 